Do you want to make five, ten, a thousand, a million X gains in the next bull market? Well, this is the video you have been waiting for. And you better not be holding Cardano. If you hold Cardano, that's one way to get everyone in the neighborhood screwing your wife. And you'll be there sitting in your dirty little chair, watching, filming, and handing drinks to all the men who don't have ADA and instead have crypto gaming projects in their portfolios. So if you're ready to make some real money, make sure that you watch this video and follow me on x.com forward slash ZSS, I mean Superman. <laughs> the Superman, me. Would you like to learn what are the next 100 to 1000 X cryptocurrencies that you can get involved in before the next bull market and make savage money? Now, in the last week, I have been compiling so much data in order for you to be able to see how you should be constructing your portfolios for the next bull market in order to make sure that you are set up to maximize and optimize gains when that next bull market comes. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Superman. It isn't Alex Becker. I am the superhero of 100 to 1000 X cryptocurrency gems. I have found the great and the good in the past. Such luminaries as Cardano, Solana, Phantom, Hex, all of these before they actually made the big time and everybody was talking about them. So I have got a very good intuition about cryptocurrencies, about the ones that are going to make you a lot of money. Now, you will probably... Oh, by the way, before I move any further, let me just make sure I am live. Yes, I is. You will probably... So... Make sure, before you go any further, that you quite literally tap a like on this video. It's so super easy, but it helps me enormously. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss out. Because I'm telling you, if you missed my last stream, then you missed out on some golden nuggets. Now, in this video, I'm going to be presenting to you a whole heap of data that I have been collecting that has actually made me reconsider what I'm going to be buying should, should everything fall again and we have these recessionary lows and we've got cryptocurrencies because at the end of the day, yes, cryptos are going up right now, but it, it's not sustainable. We're not in a bull market. Believe it or not, we are not in a bull market. This whole drive in prices across many, many assets, many altcoins, no matter what risk level, has been purely because of the speculation regarding ETFs, like all the permables on Twitter, on YouTube, they all think that ETF is going to be granted. And they, unlike back in 2017 and 2019, back in the last kind of bear to bull markets, you, you, don't, you don't have what used to be like a few crypto YouTubers. Now you have got hundreds of them and they are all bullish. Now, a lot of them have not been around as long as I have. In fact, I'd say 99% have not been around as long as I have in the crypto space. And I can tell you right now, this will not last. But I am hoping for a recessionary though. Now, if you had watched me in the last video, you would have got the inside scoop on a lot of these cryptocurrencies. The ones that in literally the last seven days have pumped dramatically. Metagods, since my last video, pumped 10x. 10 whole x after my video. And this predated the video that I'm going to talk a little bit about, which is this one which is this one from Alex Becker that he did yesterday. Alex Becker almost word for word talked about what I did in the last video, which is where he was basically saying that the gaming ecosystem is one of the most promising. Essentially, that includes games, games developers, or as he calls it, game studios and launch pads. And the ones that have the most promise are ones that are on the new chains, like Avalanche, like Solana, and the ones that are coming up, the ones that are growing right now, like Sweet and Aptos, like these are the areas that you should be concentrating on. And of course, I said that, and then his video, which came out yesterday, then exacerbated the rise in a lot of the cryptocurrencies. Like, for instance, Shrapnel, which 
you know, yesterday went from seven cents to like, I think it was 14, 15 cents overnight, just because he mentioned it. And when it came out, shrapnel is very, very new. It's come out between my last video and this video, came out on Qcoin, came out on Qcoin, and it started about three cents, shot up to about 18 cents, and then came down to 10 and then under that. And then he talks about it. It's seven cents, not doing anything. He talks about it, shoots up. Like, regardless of how long Alex Becker has actually been in the cryptocurrency space, he's very, very influential. And as soon as he spoke about these coins, I mean, there was an instant reaction. And so many cryptocurrencies went up. The ones he spoke about directly and ones very, very close in description to what he was talking about. Now, as a result of his video, somebody posted a reply yesterday, Yellow Panther. And he said, for your information, this is an outdated list. So he he tweeted uh, that Alex Becker had come on. He talked about Neo Tokyo, Immutable X, Avalanche Seedify, Illuvium, uh, Vulcan Forged, Merit Circle, Engine, Sandbox, D-Race, and Sidus. Now, you'll know some of these I have covered. For instance, Sidus, uh, Sandbox, Illuvium, Seedify, Immutable X. But... <clears throat> I watched that video myself, and my personal feeling was that he was actually talking about coins of the past and ignoring a lot of, you know, the newer things. Now, he did say that he's not going to be promoting small cap cryptocurrencies because he doesn't want to get his followers wrecked. And he said, I don't, and I'm not even saying buy them, right? But I agree with this, with this tweet. It is an outdated list. It is a lot of his holds from the previous bull market. And so this video is going to be looking at what are the more modern picks in game. What are the more modern picks? The picks that, in my opinion, have been outperforming everything. Outperforming everything. Like killing it. Killing it. And I want to make sure that you know what I know and also make sure that you know that I am actually going to be reconfiguring how I have my portfolio set up. So let me get straight into the action. I am assuming that you can hear me okay. Let me just make sure. I'm having a bit of a departure from the normal um, blazer and shirt today. <laughs> Sexy Superman's back. <laughs> Yeah, no, you can. You can hear me. You can hear me perfectly. So I am going to get to you, people. I am going to get to you. But before I move any further, I do want to just get straight into the data that I've compiled and then talk about picks, okay? Not sexy picks, not se not picks of, of, of Cardano holders' wives being screwed by crypto pro gaming project holders. I hold Cardano, so I'm in on the joke. But um, but my picks, what well, I am going to be adding for sure to my portfolio, I'm going to be adding them for sure on an assumption they reach low enough prices. So what I have got is a range of different spreadsheets to show you. So I'm going to go through them as succinctly as possible. So I showed you this in the last episode, which was my DCAs. This is what I've been buying in this market, in this bear market. What I also showed you was my HODL gains. These are what I have held from the last market as some residue of vested uh, tokens that you know became unlocked during the bear market. So they couldn't be sold at all time highs. So I'm still holding a lot of tokens. So this market, um, what I held from the last market, all gaming, and then I'm gonna be taking you through some really, really good data regarding the October, November pump. All right, relative to my narrative buys. Okay, so if you have been watching me uh, on, tw well, it's not just on Twitch, it's on here actually. I did four videos where I was looking at lower risk, mid risk, high risk, degen risk, and across many narratives. Okay, and now what I have done is I have basically gotten the data on every single one of these cryptocurrencies to see how they have performed to advise me on have I got the right tokens. And what are the narratives that have actually exploded and show real relevance, regardless of, you know, irrespective of them not, that they're not even being a narrative at the moment. There is no real narrative. All right. We've got bullish speculation on account of ETFs potentially happening. 
I, you know my personal opinion if you're in my DCA mastermind group. But, you know, um, crypto gaming has really shown itself both in the bear market pump at the beginning of the year and this one. So anyway, so I have looked to see what are the best performing, what have been the best performing narratives in this pump. And this will show you what is most evergreen. Because as I said, there is no perm there is no narrative right now. It's just all ETFs, it's just all Bitcoin, and then money flowing from you know um, large caps to mid caps to low caps to micro caps, blah blah blah. Right, that whole altcoin season thing. So, with there not being a narrative, what has pumped? And this is really golden stuff, really golden stuff. I have worked on a whole day on 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 these um, on these um, particular sheets. So, first of all, uh, this this is what I've been DCAing into, and these are the best performers. And this is, well, it should be ranked. It should be ranked in October profit. Yeah, it is. Uh, so this is the profit from bottom. So if you bought from the bottom. Now, I tried to keep my DCAing as close to the bottom as possible, but in a lot of cases, I didn't get it. So this is the percentage profit for me from my DCA point and this is the percentage profit if you had bought exactly at the bottom and what we already see immediately is we see two big games developers at the top and then we see we see Solana and we see Avalanche right and what this is showing is is that basically layer ones whether that be ETH killers or Solana killers layer ones is a constant evergreen narrative right they are constantly always going up because they're the next best things to bitcoin bitcoin's a store of value it's a currency it's the longest it's the mcdonald's of crypto yada 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 and it's the one that's going to be getting an etf first over everything but layer ones come second you know layer one is led by ethereum but new layer ones that are cheaper faster are basically showing that there's a lot of interest right now in the newer crypto. So whilst Ethereum is now deflationary, actually uh, newer cryptocurrencies are the ones that are booming right now and particularly newer than Ethereum. So basically the ones that were looking to be the Ethereum killers of the, the ones that were basically all the Solana class of layer ones in the last cycle and now you know basically looking to be ethereum killers and whilst ethereum and whilst ethereum is deflationary it's not going up a lot it's not going up a lot so uh whatever let me just have a look in my holds like ethereum close to the bottom of this list okay well okay it's kind of in the middle but a 125 percent gain that's rubbish and that is from last year's bottom, right? From $950. And that's showing you that's how much has traveled in a year and a half. So it's all these people saying, Ethereum this, Ethereum that, Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that. No, actually, the, the most exciting things is everything but those two. Those are cryptocurrencies you, buy, you get at the end. Those are cryptocurrencies that you, you put your profits in. But they're not the cryptocurrencies you make your profits with. Bitcoin and Ethereum... Are wealth, are wealth, uh, wealth preservers, and everything else is a wealth generator. So, Ethereum and Bitcoin, just remember this: they are wealth preservation assets, and everything else is a potential wealth generation asset. So, pointless to have Ethereum, and uh, 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 even though yes, they are going to be the ones that fall the least when we do get a bear market. They're actually going to be the ones that have diminishing returns every a single cycle. And now, and last cycle, we had the birth of Ethereum. It kind of went from, you know, $90 up to $5,000. That was Ethereum's hype cycle. Like it's real kind of moving into Bitcoin status hype cycle. But next time it's going to be the Solana, the Avalanche, the Aptoses, the Swees, the Phantoms, the Hedera's. Like all of these are going to be competing to be number one. And at the moment, Avalanche and Solana are doing super, super well. So that's what I'm initially seeing here. But what you can see uh, is that games developers, games development are absolutely outstripping everything. And this is even considering that Solana went to $8 up to $63. That's a huge multiplier, all right? 
And uh, and even that multiplier is not even close to, like, for instance, what's happened with uh, Hello. And then if we move into my holds, then so many of my holds have been booming. And what I've done is, looking at these holds, is what I've done is I've actually highlighted in turquoise the cryptocurrencies that are gaming coins, right? So of this, of this list of 46 cryptocurrencies, look, look at how many, the top is completely dominated by games. And then it kind of spaces out a little. And then within that, you've got launch pads. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. And then you've got everything else, right? That's when now you've got, uh, well, Bitcoin was, Bitcoin was relatively high up for, uh, you know, for, for considering it's the one that gives diminishing returns. 25th out of 46. And Ethereum also, round about, round about the same. But it's as you go towards the bottom that you don't see as many games. And that shows you that games really is the best narrative right now. And, and, and it's not just that it's the best narrative right now, because there is no gaming narrative as such. There's not been something major going on in games specifically. Like, for instance, in the last bull market, when Facebook changed their names to Meta, that caused a Metaverse season, right? So there was an actual outside mainstream news event that made everything happen for Metaverse coins. Just like at the beginning of the year, ChatGPT and revolutions in... Um, in AI, made AI cryptos go up. There's nothing in gaming right now, and yet it's the one that soared the most. So that's telling you something. Of everything I hold, the ones that have gone up the best are gaming cryptocurrencies. So this has now changed somewhat my bias as to the weightings of cryptocurrencies that I have in my portfolio. So I am actually going to be, and I'll talk more about that after I've gone through all these sheets, the coins that I am going to be taking positions in. Right, the ones that I want to be holding, they're very low cap now. I want to get them lower. And they have a very good chance of going lower, for the reasons I'll talk about uh, in a little bit. But, um, yeah. But, it's a, but, in the main, game's killing it. And it shows you exactly what I said in the last stream was bang on. What I said in the last stream is that gaming decouples from all other cryptocurrencies because... Layer 1s and everything, Layer 1s, DeFi, dApps, all that, they are technologies that are already built, all right? They're, they're almost already released when they've got a token. The thing that makes them increase in value is ecosystem growth and users. But the technology is already there. And so they all go up pretty much the same way. But with gaming, why that decouples is because games actually get better. They don't release a game straight away. So when a cryptocurrency game, like for instance, Metagods, which is used, well, it, it 22, 20, no, 24x from its absolute low. 24x, right? Because what happens is, is when you first invest in a game, let's say it comes out during, you know, you get it via a launch pad. What happens is, is that there's no game. There's the promise of a game. You see how it works. You see the... You see the um, like the presentation. I forget what you call them, but you know you see the slideshow, the slide deck. That's it, pitch deck. You see the pitch deck where it's like, oh, this is the game. This is what the game's about. This is how it works. This is the token system. This is the tokenomics. This is the data about how blockchain gaming is going to be worth this many billions. Blah 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 blah. And that's what we got in the last bull market when I invested in Meta Gods and Katana Inu and Space Falcon and all of these, it was, and, and Cidus Heroes and Star Atlas, they were, they were just concepts at that point. They were white papers and they were pitch decks. But then over time, you get a game and then you get improvements on the game. Look at, look at GTA 5. If you're a gamer, GTA 5 has constant updates, constant missions, constant DLCs, right? So, and Call of Duty the same, always an improvement, always evolving. And that's the same with crypto gaming. Like, it can just get better and better. Whereas everything else, it kind of just stays, the technology kind of just stays the same. And what changes is the adoption rate and the dApps. That's the difference. So that's why I love crypto gaming. Right, I'm going to deal with some super chats, super chats, just in case they get lost. So first of all, Birdo, um, 199, Army of Fortune, for, former devs from Supercell. 
AFC. I think somebody spoke uh, asked me about um, Army of Fortune last time. Um, I'll, I'll have a look into it. I'll have a look into it. Army of Fortune. Okay. Naked Trader. What a legend. $22. You gotta get this. Champion of the donations at this point. <laughs> Thank you very much. Actually, I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you some super duper you know, Monaco car. I wake up Carmel. every morning. I'm like, oh my god, I'm living in Monaco. I'm living in a, in a dream. Really? Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, I love her. Right. Okay. So thank you very much, Nika Trader. Super good to see you. Keep up the amazing work. We love you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But it's a supercell made Clash Royale and Clash of Clans. So they were big like iPhone apps, weren't they? So okay, I'll give it a. I'll give it a look. Um, Grok is the, no, it's not Grok. Grok, Grok is going to be very relevant shortly, but not just yet. Grok is going to be very relevant shortly. So, I've just compiled loads of sheets of data that is showing that gaming is uh, a behemoth, basically. And even the shit stuff, even the shit stuff, you know, the stuff that, um, you know, hasn't been moving in a while. Like, for instance, Space Falcon. Now, I like the look of... When I first invested in Space Falcon, I really liked the look of it. Uh, I'm not going to show you it, but basically it's a lot like Star Fox. So, you uh, are in charge of this little spaceship. You're just shooting all these different enemy spaceships down. It's fucking awesome. So simple. And uh, and that has... They've basically done nothing. I've seen no development. I've seen them not really saying anything anywhere i've not seen any marketing for for years you know for, for the two years that they've been around and um and yet that went up 7x <laughs> so it shows you what happens when you've got a modern gaming project that a is looking at new chains and b is actually yeah you know, as i say is modern and uh, and the other thing is is that they are spread out across other get they're spread out across an ecosystem, an arcade of games. So as you can see, the top of this list still after, and this is after all of the all of the pumps have taken place, even after Alex Becker's pumps, which were all pretty much games, so hardly any games developers in what he was talking about. And even after that pump, still, the games developers are the ones that are dominating. So games developers, this is this is without doubt any any pre-sale that I see, I'm gonna go for, for a games developer. As long as there is something about, you know, they've got a good team, maybe they're even looking at another chain. So something I did actually have an opportunity to get in at seed stage was, um, what's it called? I'm hoping that I find it on here. See, that's just how, forget, uh, GameSwift, that's it. So GameSwift is a games developer on Arbitrum, and I had a chance to get into that at seed stage, and I didn't. I decided to pass on it. And now I realise that was a stupid thing to do because having gone through this bear market, basically you will have seen that a lot of the cryptocurrencies I've spoken about uh, are across a range of different narratives. So DeFi, Layer 1, Layer 2, uh, New Layer 1, um, Metaverse, uh, Proof of Work, uh, AI, all that stuff, right? So I've tried to have a really truly diversified portfolio. And actually... The people who got most rich, and I know because I know m most of the crypto YouTubers, don't ask me how, but I know most of the crypto YouTubers' portfolios, right? I track them. And the ones that actually got the most rich are the ones that had games in their portfolio. So basically, Alex Becker, Elio Trades, JN, JRNY Crypto, is it? Um, those three were killing it. And of course, I was big on games, and I killed it. I showed you in the last stream how I made how I built in basically one month fifty thousand dollars into five million. Subsequently, because because of the timing of the market, because when I invested in these coins and it what got to five million, I was thinking, well, there's still another six months of a bull market left, right? This was October, November, twenty twenty one. I thought it's still another six months of a bull market left. So I thought, you know, April we'll probably start to see the market uh, being crushed, and then. Um, I'll have a load of tokens already out and I can sell them. But no, I got caught in the crosshairs just like a lot of these crypto projects did. Like I got 10 or 25% up front, which I could sell. But then the rest of them, I had to wait. Basically, I'm still un unvesting. They're still, you know, getting 
unvested at, at right now. So, you know, so a lot of the coins that I, I you know, kind of had to hold um, have, have dra drastically plummeted in price. But, um, but that's because we've had a very long bear market and we are coming to the end of it. And what we're going to be having, in my opinion anyway, once the halving is out of the way, once we've got the headwinds out of the way, then we should be seeing probably in about, I would say, eight months from now, I would say that's the beginning of the bull run, right? Eight months from now, we have the halving, we have probably ETFs, we've got the recession or whatever headwinds come as a result of that. All of that can fit in an eight month window and then recovery, recovery phase from about eight months time, eight to 10 months time. And so around about uh, July to September, July to September next year, I think will be the beginning of the proper bull market. And what I have been doing all this time is I've tried to be I've tried to be too diversified. I've got too many of every. I've got almost an equal weighting of everything. Like other than what I already hold, which you've seen here. Other than that, you, know, you will see there's an equal equal weighting. There's a lot of layer ones here that you can see. Um, hardly any games here, and you can see that my weighting is so evenly distributed that I'm actually I've actually I've made a lot of money in the last you know, kind of three weeks, a lot of money in the last three weeks, you know, um, my portfolio has gone up kind of, kind of about 30% in value overall. Um, and that gives you an, that gives you an indication of, of how violent it's going to be next time. But I would say that the majority of the coins that have done really well are coins that are actually in my holds, these, these, these games. So I have not waited it I, 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 this is why I'm glad that we've got this session, this, this bear market rally, because it's a perfect opportunity to analyze data and see what am I holding that's actually I should just get rid of, and what am I looking to buy that I should just not bother buying, and what should I consider that I didn't consider before. And the coins I'm going to be showing you after I've shown you the spreadsheets is going to go through that. Um, bear with me a second, let me just make sure nothing else has come up. No, nothing else has come up. So um, anyway, yeah. So uh, these three um, these three pages shows you that games and games developers have been absolutely killing it. I don't really need to. This is just the updated list, and you can see that you know out of a list of eighty four cryptocurrencies, that half of them are three x. Look, even Immutable X thirty seven cents to one dollar fifteen. That's over three x. Right, so over half the list of of three x, and you know the kind of last quarter of them have five x at least, and then the last kind of you know eight have over ten x, and some of twenty to thirty x. So that's showing you that gaming projects it almost doesn't matter what you are. If you're a gaming project, you, you're doing really well, and the only one. The, the only ones that aren't doing well are ones that are basically dead anyway. Shrapnel, Shrapnel um, did an inversion. So that's not properly, that's not properly on here. But I should, I, I should update that. But um, the rest of them, like Galaxy War, you know, Danger, nothing's even happening on that. And some of these are just, some of these are really crap anyway. Th that, this one isn't, because, but this is new. But these these two, for instance, these these two, Bit Hotel, the Parallel, Space Misfits. I've looked in Galaxy War. I've looked at their Twitter. They're not even updating it. So it's just showing you that everything's going up regardless. So you're you're not a genius. You're not a genius um, for calling for say. You know, you're not a genius if you called if you say, oh, I I I told my members about Engine. It's gone fifty two percent. Big fucking whoop. That's not even a 2x. Right? So I see a lot of a lot of people that run kind of telegram groups going, oh, I called this. And they called shit ones, right? At least I called decent ones, right? At least I called like ones like Sinverse, Metagods, um, and then Playable, PlayZap, Gamey, all that, and then they shut the fuck up. Right? So yeah, so anyway, that's by the by. All I'm saying is is that. 
you you don't even have to be a decent game to move and that shows you what will happen in a bull market that shows you actually a lot of the reason why uh bottom this bottom to top thing why so many coins uh over 100 x it's osmosis it's osmosis right the market cap went from what uh 200 billion all the way up to 3 trillion right osmosis that means that through sheer money flow that naturally shitty little coins are going to receive some and they're going to pump and then what happens is you just get this you get this vicious cycle where it's not vicious in a bull market not if you're in one of these coins you get in this vicious cycle where all of a sudden something that was shit through osmosis has had a bit of a pump and then other youtubers talk about it and it gets mega pumped and it, so it doesn't even have to be that good to get a mega pump. But I'm looking for the upper echelon of these gains in the next bull market. I don't really want the down echelon. I don't want the dregs. I don't want the things that are crap, but just go up through osmosis. I want the things that are really, really, really good. And what I've, what I have found is, is that gaming is probably the narrative in the next market. It's probably the narrative. Anyway, now I'm going to move on. To this, which to me is the most, which is the most eye-opening eye thing, which is the pump data. All right, all narrative buys from low to local high. All right, and this is based on this, on this thing here. Right, okay. Just before I move on to that, I've seen a couple more super chats, so bear with me a second. Holy fuck, that's a big one. And the super magic, no, Cryptidia. <laughs> I love it when you're around. Inia, Crypto Glasson. Love the new format lately on your content, mate. First class analysis as always. I appreciate that, Inia. Really appreciate that dramatically. And you, without a doubt, are going to get. And apologize if I shout, but I do get very excited. So if you don't like it, you know, just I wake deal up every morning. I'm like, oh my God, I'm living in Monaco. I'm living in a, in a dream. Really? really? Yes. You know, I how was the car physically? And a tire <laughs> physically? And how are you physically? How was and the And you've got to, you've got to get this one, the money one. Because money, 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 you are Mr. Money right now. And there's no doubt about it. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Inia. And I appreciate your feedback. I've been trying to make these streams literally as information packed Hardly any waffle. I just want you to just get all the information and soak it all in via osmosis. You just listen. And the more you listen, the more it just the more it just goes in. Alright? I'm trying to really give you my intuition. Right? A lot of intuition, I think you're 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 kind of born with it to an extent. And I think that sometimes you just find what you were meant to do. And in my opinion, cryptocurrency was that thing, right? But I think that I can just make you think the way I think. And, you know, the, the way of thinking that, like I said, I spoke about essentially what Alex Becker talked about the whole stream. He basically paraphrased what I said. And accidentally, he didn't watch my... I don't believe he did. Um, he didn't... I don't think he watched my stream. But it's just because it's common sense if you've got the not... If you've just got the know-how. And so anyway, yeah. So... That's why um, I'm just trying to load you with information and facts, not with opinions. If you watch most YouTubers, it's all just opinion. They talk, talk shit. They really do talk utter crap. Boxing fan, what's your opinion on the recent pump? Are we expecting a dip still? Everybody is saying it's a bull run. Yeah, I mean, everybody was saying that back in um, January and February. And uh, I would say back in January and February, it was definitely more obvious it was a bear market rally. This time, it's not as obvious. Uh, because of the ETF. So it's really the million dollar question. You know, my personal opinion is we haven't had the most major headwind that we've been expecting this whole time. You know, we're we're right now, we're in a we're in a positive news cycle. Right? It's just it's just everything is just it's just building like a snowball. Positive news, positive news. As as the as the prices are going up, so then is the positive news. But then there is gonna get a point where it reaches a kind of it reaches a kind of ceiling where it can't really push any higher. Resistance. It just can't get any higher. And that is the point that there'll be a lull and then a potential negative news cycle. Okay? And on the most cynical side, the negative news cycle will be 
that the ETFs are all disproved. They're all rejected, right? That would be, in my opinion, it would be catastrophic because the market has, has priced in an ETF being approved. Now, it's not fully priced. It's not fully priced in an ETF. The effect of an ETF uh, is going to be nothing short of crazy. It's not going to be nothing short of totally mental, right? But, um, but uh, right at this point, people are anticipating that the ETF is going to be approved. And of course, if the ETF is approved, then we're going to see a mega pump of institutional, traditional finance money coming into cryptocurrency. But not just yet. You know, we've still got the potential for this to all have been just a big game, a load of smoke and mirrors, a load of rallying, getting people really excited, and then to crush them later. But where it begins to get difficult, for me anyway, is, is that in previous bear markets that I've been in, it's been more obvious that it's been more obvious to the the dumb money that crypto could die. Right. So in previous bear markets, there was always it didn't have enough. It didn't have as much substance as in, as much institutional adoption as there is now. Institutional um, endorsements as there is now. Larry Fink and Elon Musk and every you know it's you know, you you never saw this in the last bull market. So it it comes to a point where you know that Bitcoin's going to go to 100k. And you know crypto isn't going to die, whereas in the last two bear markets that I've been in, you, th you probably thought it was going to die, right? Or Well, I didn't think it was going to die. I always had a strong belief, obviously. But you know, when people were saying it, they genuinely believed it. And I don't think people believe it now because we're so close to real institutional adoption. So I don't necessarily see how we're going to go to 12k Bitcoin. If I'm honest with you, I don't see how we can go to 12k Bitcoin just purely on what's coming up. Who would sell? Like even me, if I bought today at 37k, I wouldn't sell because I know what's coming up. So who would? And I know I've been around a while, but I think that even if I'd been in crypto six months, if I'd listened to crypto YouTubers or seen what's been said, why would I sell? So I think it is going to need something very, very dramatic to happen, which I almost don't want to happen. You know, having seen, like, I'll, I'll be honest, I have not deployed anywhere near as much. I've got so much in stable coins, it's actually annoying me to see a big segment of my portfolio just not moving, obviously, while everything else is shooting. Like, I could literally have just put that in any, any old fucking crap, and it would just be moving up, right, instead of leaving it in the stable coin. But that's, that's the way I decided to play. I'm playing it hard mode, just like I did in the last bear market. I played in hard mode, waited for 3.5k, then I bought. And that's what I'm doing this time. But I don't necessarily see us going to 12 unless something really bad happens. Either Binance goes down, Tether goes down, or the SEC, who appear to be having their powers diminished anyway, the SEC actually say... We're never going to approve an ETF. That would be the only way that I think it would all come down. Of course, they would approve an ETF in the future. But to say it just to crush the market, that, uh, those are the potentials. And of course, recession mixed in the, in the mix. But I just, uh, yeah, it's difficult to see 12k Bitcoin. But that's, I don't really care about Bitcoin because I'm not buying Bitcoin. I've got my Bitcoins. That's, that's never going to be sold. I'm not selling it ever, I don't think. I think I'll just pass them over to my son. Uh, I'll never sell them. Um, but the the wealth generators, the, the altcoins, these I do care about going down. And whilst I think that some bottoms have been hit, so let me just... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I think certain bottoms have been hit. I don't think Solana's ever going to go down to $5 now. And actually, that was the bottom, which actually frustrates me. But I did buy... Uh, 991 so I can't be too disappointed um I'm not necessarily sure that uh you know, Gaze for Living is ever going to go down to its bottom and uh, hello probably never will um uh, an ethereum difficult to say at this point bitcoin very hard to say I would say difficult um, I'd say quite quite hard for it to go down to 12k 
but it could go down to 15 to 20. All right, but I don't think it's I don't think it's going to go any lower than that. I don't think so anymore. Just simply because the window is closing and the halving is coming. And whilst the halving doesn't set off a bull market, it does kick in the mechanism of reversal. So, yeah, so... But I don't care. Like I said, I don't care about Bitcoin. I care about altcoins. I want to get low, altcoins as low as possible. And I think I'm still going to have a massive chance to. So, yeah. So that's, that's my feeling on it. Henry Guerrera, $5. Hey, Suman, what's your um, opinion on my portfolio? Moonbeam, Akala, Moonriver, Dogechain, Zen, Kishi, Anu, Polka Starter, Flocky. I'm an OG follower of yours. So I appreciate that, Henry. Um... Well, I think this <laughs> this stream might change your mind a little bit. Obviously, I like Moonbeam and Akala very much for having a kind of layer one multi-chain play that I think is is revolutionary in terms of its its technology. And Akala's DeFi play, so it's worth having. Moon River, it's done quite well. It's not done brilliantly. I mean, I mean, this is why you need this data. This data will say, have I chosen right? And if we have a look for Moon River, ugh, that's not good, is it? Moon River, 383. Wait a minute, that can't be right. That can't be right. Bear with me a sec. No, that's not right. 729. That's gotten two. Oops. So, lowest, uh, lowest bear price, 196, that's 96. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's 96. Um, so, 96, I mean, that puts it where? Mm, middle of the table. So with 53 cryptocurrencies, this must not be updated. What the hell? Yeah, this must not be truly updated. I definitely didn't most of them, but maybe not Moon River. So it puts it middle of the table, but it's not done a it's not done a full 2x. So And then of course you've got so many that have done multiples of two that it's not even a joke. So yeah, I mean it's up it's it's down to you. Uh, does that Doge Chain has done a bit better? I don't think I've updated it on this one either, have I? No, that is over here. That is over here in the pump data. So, Doge Chain 110%, so it's 2x, it's just over a 2x, but it's right at the bottom of the range. So you know, I like it. I mean, we haven't had a meme season, a Doge season, so... You know, Doge, Doge Chain and Doge Coin are basically correlated. If Doge Coin does well, so does Doge Chain. And in, in the absence of that, Doge Chain isn't going to do much. It just kind of turbos when Doge Coin is doing well. So just as long as you're... Zen, I love Zen. Again, a DeFi play, which I'll talk more about in a little bit. Polka starter, not really, but I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. And Flocky, mm, I like Flocky, yeah. Um, let me take a couple more super chats and then I'll carry on. Hey, sup, pump, Meta V pad and Game Zone thirty forty X, keep up best. <laughs> Don't kind of know what you're saying there, but I appreciate that. And the fifteen dollars thirty seven. Pump Meta V Balling Game Zone 30 to 40 X. Keep up best. I will talk a little bit more about that very, very shortly. But I really appreciate $15. And for that, I am going to give you... Um, I'll give you this. This is smooth. <laughs> I can love him. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. New AS they are. New AS they are. Kingsley Hovel. Ready games not launched. Web 3 ready. Okay. Ready. Literally, Web3 ready games. Cool. I've heard about it as well, actually. Right, okay. So, um, 
So, the pump data. So, what I have done is I have taken all the narrative buys. Uh, I don't really want to show... I don't really want to show the right-hand side. So, let me... Can I zoom in just like... No, I can't. Yeah. So, I t took all these narrative buys across all the various... Na yeah, all the, all the various risk um, levels across all of these various narratives. Okay. So... There are, what, 80 coins or so? Because there's 22 times 4 in most uh, most occasions. Sometimes there's not one. So, for instance, Kai Network isn't even out yet. A Starknet isn't out. ZK Swap isn't out. So, not all of what's on here is going to be in the pump data. Because it's only coins that are out right now. Um, so, I've taken all of these. And I have... I've put it into this spreadsheet here and what you've got is you've got the risk level so you've got the actual crypto the risk level has it been bull or bear exposed the type so what I um you know what I typecast them on in this sheet and then the price they at, were at, at their lows or at a time I spoke about it so I haven't come, I haven't put everything at their low lows because I really want to talk about it in a more recent past I don't really want to talk about last June, like June 2022. I want to talk about more recent past so that it makes this data a bit more relevant. So what we've got here is we, we've got a real mix, actually. So you're not just seeing games. You're not just seeing games. But that is because of the games I chose, if I'm honest with you. But, um, but you do see a good mix. And what I did was I got all this all this data, all of the various profits that were made. So, for instance, Bonk, which is a meme coin, on Solana. And that shows you, really, if there is no actual narrative that's explicit, it's showing a narrative that's implicit, that's implied. Which is that, although there's no key, oh, this is a DSO narrative, this is a meme coin narrative, blah, blah, blah. what it is showing you is there is a move for ecosystem coins. So in the last bull market, a lot of the coins that went up, if I just show you uh, bear to bull, no. Top to bottom, most of the to tokens that pumped the shit out of were ERC20 tokens because 2017 kind of saw the birth of the ICO in cryptocurrency, which was Ethereum-based pre-sales, where you could just invest in all these coins, but they were all on the Ethereum chain. And they're the ones that pumped last market, right? So 20, 2018 to 2021 was the first hype cycle for all of these ETH coins that came out 2020, 2017, 2018, 2019. Shut up. I think next time we're actually going to be seeing other ecosystems, coins doing well. All right. So in the next bull market, I am expecting to see that Solana coins... Avalanche coins, Polkadot coins, Cosmos coins, um, Aptos coins, Sui coins. I'm expecting to see that they are, all the dApps and all the coins within all these ETH wannabes are going to be pumping. Because it's going to be the equivalent of the last cycle, which was Ethereum's last cycle. And next time, I don't think it's going to be Ethereum cycle as much. I think it's going to be new chain cycles. And Bonk is a perfect representation of that implied narrative. Because quite clearly, who cares about Shiba? Who cares about Doge? Everything, in typical bull markets, you will always, well, in a typical bull run, even if it's happening during a bear market, is, is that you will see meme coins tend to finish off the run, right? And there you will see Doge do well, Shiba do well, Flocky do well, maybe Baby Doge and some of these dog coins. But we move into a different era now. I don't think those are as relevant anymore. Shiba, Doge, they're not relevant anymore. How much have they pumped? Hardly at all. Shiba Inu, which is one of the to tokens in here, I'm sure. Yeah, it should be one of the meme coins. I can't even fucking find it. But Shiba Inu has hardly done a thing. Oh, fuck it. Can't be bothered. But Shiba Inu has hardly done a th Oh, no, it's not one of my... It's not one of them, is it? Because Pepe, Flocky, Dogecoin... Yeah, okay. So it wasn't in there. 
But um, yes, yeah, not done that great. Sheep has not done that great. So that's that's showing the death now of the previous beam coins, and now we've got the new ones. We've got Pepe, we've got Wojak, we've got Bonk, those kinds of coins. Flocky, those kinds of coins. So anyway, so yeah, Bonk is a Solana meme coin, and that's done the best, 16x. Injective, this is a Cosmos DeFi Layer 1. This has done 8x. Ordinals is a Bitcoin NFT uh, project that pisses me off. <laughs> um, I was wanting to buy Ordinals, but it was not on any exchange that I'm on. It is now. It's on Binance now. And of course, it's gone up, you know, 8x. But um, I, 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 it was screaming, buy me, buy me, buy me. And I didn't because it's not on... It's not on any exchange, not on any decks. You had to buy it on something that enables a Bitcoin type chain coin. And uh, I might have been on Qcoin or something like that. I'm not on that. So I missed out. That was my stupidity. But I already knew that this was a this this was a potential flyer. Even though I didn't really get it, knowing purely it's linked to Bitcoin and Bitcoin's gonna get an ETF and yeah, Ethereum had its NFT cycle last time. This is Bitcoin's turn, right? So I thought this was going to be big, and it's... Never mind. Meta VPad, Launchpad, Games for a Living, Games Developers. So you've almost got almost every single crypto... Almost every single asset class represented by a coin, right? So here, meme. DeFi. Okay, there's another... I, I call ordinals a meme. I shouldn't really. That's more... I should probably call that more NFTs, by the way. Um, really because it... It has a novelty factor to me. Launchpad, games devs, layer one ETH killer, storage, layer one proof of work, Cardano ecosystem AI. So it's perfectly represented. So there is no bias at the top. And that's not the point I'm making though. The point I'm going to make, I'm going to come to very, very shortly. But this, just make sure that you somehow screenshot this or whatever to see what has pumped the most so that you have an accurate understanding of what's likely to pump na naturally next time. And now we get to the point. The point is, where what, were the, what was the average performance of that narrative when there is no narrative permeating in this, bulls, in this uh, bear market rally? Meme coin number one. Meme coins are doing the best of everything. Brought up mainly because of Bonk, also Ordinals and Wojak. Um, Pepe's done okay, you'll know. Dogechain's done a 2x. Flocky, average. But basically, 529% average gains. 5.2x average for me. But we knew that anyway. Because when I was doing my video on the most explosive narratives, memes number one. So we knew Meme was going to do the best anyway. This is surprising though. DeFi is number two, right? Injective has exploded. Hex was the first to explode. You could almost have seen the Bitcoin pump coming just because of how Hex exploded initially. Going from like 2.8 cent, uh, 0.28 of a cent up to uh, 1.2 cents, right? Zen has been strong. Akala has been okay, but basically... These are four good DeFi coins. I picked good. So this was a 3.5x in the main, just in October, November. Games Developers was actually third. But it was held down by these two that didn't do so well. Gala's okay, and Games for Living has obviously smashed it. So what this is telling me is, is that given how well these games, the gaming ecosystem has done... And yet it's third place here means I need to change a little bit what I'm putting my money into. And that's what is going to come up in a little bit. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Launchpad's fourth best. And I'll be honest with you, this would have been so much better if I went for four D-Gen launchpads. But I didn't. I went for Dowmaker, which is a dog. It didn't fucking move at all. And then Polka Starter, which moved just like a tiny bit. So considering the low market cap of Polka Starter, it hardly even went up. The ones that went up in the on the main was Meta VPad and C Defy. And Polka Starter does do games. Dowmaker does games. 
Dowmaker, I think, did Game Swift. So they do games and gaming ecosystems, but yet Cedify and Meta VPad actually did really well. So um, as a combination of the two, these are almost, you know, these almost actually complement each other. Cedify Gala, G Games for a Living, and Meta VPad uh, were the strongest four in these two. Age layer ones, not bad either. Obviously, Solana's really shut up. Nier's done okay. Algorand's not done that great. I'm a bit disappointed in Algorand, so I think I'm I think I'm done accumulating Algorand. I do think it's gonna go well, but I'm done accumulating Algorand. I've gotten as, as much Algorand as I think I want now. And I think I'm gonna concentrate on other stuff. And Mean obviously did well, but that, that did well because it got listed somewhere. Algorand's listed everywhere, so you know, you're not really going to see a listing pump on that. Proof of Work Layer Ones was was uh, fifth, uh, sixth, but Casper mainly led that. Kai Network isn't out. Kadena, modest, not actually that great. And Ironfish, not that great. So Casper completely carried these. So, uh, so despite the fact that Casper is showing a proof of concept, Proof of Work, Fast Layer Ones, explode... This one exploded, but Dane hasn't. Shot. Ironfish hasn't, but not many people know about Ironfish, but even still. So, taking a bit of waiting, maybe. Storage. Strange one, this. This is seventh. Seventh. Storage. What? So, mainly because of Blue Zell. Blue Zell was a great um, gainer. That carried the whole narrative. Stratos has done okay. It's done a what? Just over a 2x. Are we not that much? Crust, not that much? So Blue Zell's carried that. So I don't put much weight on storage, if I'm honest with you. Because if we have a look on... Um, if we... If we change how we look at this... To type. And go to storage... It's mainly Blue Zell. Six, 676. I don't even know why. Because Blue Zell's old and it's shit, to be fair. But it's got a lot of liquidity. And Stratus is second. And then you've got, at the bottom, you've got Internet Computer and Crust Network dragging down the performance completely. So if you discount Blue Zell and just take the average of these, it's 99%. So Blue Zell's carrying them, essentially. Um... Yeah, Blue Zell's carrying them. But, you know, it, it still stands. It still stands, you know, that you've got you've got to give respect to these narratives. They're doing, you know, the ones that are doing the best and the ones that are also not actually doing that great. Metaverse is a real surprise. Metaverse, an average of 86%, considering that High Street in, in the beginning of the year did really super well. And, uh, yeah, and it's still, it actually didn't have a great, yeah, so Metaverse, not great. Layer Zeros, shit, to be honest. Avalanche is, is the only reason it's gone up that high, 88%. Not good at all. Base Blockchain, that's to be expected. DAG, these also, that's also not doing well. So Aleph Zero, no one cares. Um, new layer ones, DEXs, Cardano, Blockchain, layer two, big brands. And then look, real world assets has had 208%. So if we have a look, and this is in a completely non-real world asset cryptocurrency state at the moment. We've got hardly any. To be honest, these four projects are the only RWA cryptocurrencies that are actually any good at this point. And Relio Network has brought up the... And I've not even counted it from the beginning. So from the beginning of the year, it was like one cent. I only counted Relio Network from when I talked about it. So 13 cents. So it's done a 3x. Centrifuge done a 3x. And Chainlink has done a 3x. Even though it's a... And that is another big surprise, is that you're seeing at the... You'll see, you will see there's actually a lot of mid and low caps, a lot of mid and low risks that are at the top. Anyway, I'll talk about that another time, I think. But RWA has done really well, funnily enough. So that's, that's, a, whoops, that's a precursor to the next bull market. 
And uh, I think Token Fire is probably one of the ones that's most exciting and also Centrifuge. But Relio is like the D-Gen's favourite. And of course, Chainlink, well, I think this one's going to go up to about $200, $150 to $200 by the end of the bull market. And it could actually be included in an ETF. So that would take Chainlink to... Um, that, yeah, that would take Chainlink to even higher. And maybe 300, 400. Difficult to see at this point. But we'll have to wait and see. But I think Chainlink's very, very strong. It's basically at the forefront of DeFi, the forefront of real world assets. It's kind of changing as a as an asset. Like it's become a, a cross chain asset, basically. Um, I've forgotten the term for it. It's like a multi chain connectivity. It's like, I want to say it's like uh, MCCIP. Cross-chain something protocol, but anyway, a cross-chain interoperability protocol. So Chainlink is really, and this was my slam dunk from the last market, so just hold it. I, I, I still hold pretty much all my Chainlink. I sold bits, but um, yeah, I still pretty much hold all my Chainlink. Anyway, yeah, so um, and then, then AI, strangely, and Bitensor, what an absolute beauty. I said in my stream in about June... That I said that Potensor, Casper at that point was 1.5 cents and Potensor was about $50, I want to say. And Potensor has gone on now, as Potensor is now being talked about by big YouTubers. You know, uh, Crypto Banter's talking about uh, Potensor and everybody kind of knows the name. But at the beginning, only I spoke about Potensor as a YouTuber. I mean, obviously, there were people in the, you know, people in the Potensor community talking about Potensor, but YouTubers wise, Hardly anyone. And then I asked Jerry Banfield to do a, um, a review on Potensor, and he absolutely ruined it. He absolutely, like, crushed it. But then he crushes everything, to be fair. And uh, and yet, Potensor, what a fucking rise. $161 from 30 And I said, as I said, at the time, I said, Casper and Potensor, I said, I saw both of those going into the top 50 I saw Casper going to 50 cents, this is when it was 1.5 cents, and I saw Potensor going over $1,000. So it's good to see that when you spot something early, before anybody's spoken about it, you kind of have the intuition right. So anyway, yeah, there we are. So AI, not a brilliant, not brilliant. Potensor and AI pad have basically held this up. Artificial liquid intelligence, ChatGPT have not done that great, and neither have all the others. So Potensor and, and AIPad. And I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised at Potensor because simply because of the token price. Like, it's not as attractive a token price. Just simply because of the fact it's not lots of zeros and shit. It's like the an antithesis of that, and yet it's still doing really well. So AI, yeah, layer two big brands, Arbitrum and Optimism, not brilliant, but not bad either. I mean, just the two of them have uh, managed to make a respectable again oh shit i got that wrong cardano is actually better than layer one so meld has done okay recently sunday swap i don't know why meld is there i guess it's because they're all kind of high risk adapad cornucopius and cornucopius is a gaming play as well so this is a gaming play on cardano so that's showing you another growth area cardano as well cardano has not had its explosion either so cornucopius could be a big one Sunday sort has been very, very disappointing. Um, it has gone up okay. Like, it went down to uh, 2058 very recently, like I think a month ago. And then it 2x'd in that month nearly. 58 to 94. It's not brilliant. But there is, I mean, but I, I think just no one cares about Cardano. I think people love Solana, people love Avalanche. I don't think they give a monkeys about Cardano. I think that'll come later. Anyway, moving on. Dexes have done have done quite well. GMX, average. Hashflow, not good. They had a token unlock and they actually dipped 10 whole cents. But PulseX has done okay. And Vela and Cake have done exceptionally. New layer ones. I'm surprised at this. But I think Say has brought it down a lot. Sui has done average, Aptos has done average, Moonbeam's done well, and Pulse Chain has done well. 
So these are the ones that have done the best, and Aptos is not too bad, and Sui is lagging at the moment. But in the last bull market, money tends to come to new layer ones with adoption. Okay, so at the, this present time, there's two launch pads for these. There's a Sui pad and there's Aptos launcher that have shit projects. So there's not much in the way of their shiny beacon app that makes them look really good and makes people want to go into it. So for Avalanche, it was like Trader Joe, uh, Wonderland, that brought masses over to Avalanche. Solana, well, purely because it was just fucking awesome. And then they had a few launch pads that were bringing out stuff. And, uh, and so Solana really didn't get going until, until about seven months before the bull run. I remember because I was talking about it at the time because I invested in it at one dollar ninety, and um, and when it went and from and it was at one ninety in October twenty twenty, and it was four dollars by February. So uh, February twenty twenty one. So in four months, hardly did anything, and then boom, and that was what I think is going to happen with Aptos and Sweet. It's adoption. So you've got adoption happening with Moonbeam, with Pulse Chain. You haven't got adoption so much with Sui and Aptos. You've got users, you've got wallets, but you don't have the dApps. You don't have the ecosystem growth. You don't have launch pads and you don't have a bull market. So those hamper a new layer one shooting up. Gaming, this is surprising. This is surprising. I don't know what happened here. Illuvium has had a great couple of uh, days. Star Atlas has had a great month. Voxies has dragged it down a bit, but then Mines of Delania is also strong. So I'm surprised. Only 116. Don't know quite what happened there. <laughs> so this is showing me games devs is where you need to be looking. Games, de games devs over gaming. Gaming is strong, but really it's the underpinning... A, it's two things. It's the... It's games developers and games infrastructure. So games developers, they hedge over a quantity of titles and, of course, a singular use for their token. And that's why the token is even in more demand. Because if you don't like, let's say, Townstar, you might like um, Spider Tanks on Gala, right? And so that's why you want Gala. And, of course, there's lots of people speculating on it. And people will rather speculate on a game studio or games developer than they would a game. But having said that, I am very surprised at this. Hmm. I'm very surprised at that. Then Deso, unsurprising. This is a a pretty lukewarm narrative at this point. And it will be until there's a reason for Deso to make a move. So at this point, Veracity is the one that has done well. Deso's hardly moved. So let's just have a look. At Zipump Data. Yeah, Veracity has done uh, a 3x. 4x. I always get confused by this. 300% means 4x. Um, Deso has hardly gone up. Tacky has not gone up. And Play has actually gone down for some reason. I don't know what's going on with that. I think that... I think that whatever fears people had about it, which was that, you know, you it was watch to earn... And you earn the play token. And I just think that people earn a lot of play and they just dumped it all at the same time and brought XCAD in to kind of disrepute. But it doesn't matter. Even if I took that out, the average is 144. And mainly because of veracity. So yeah, DSO is a pretty shit narrative, to be fair. It's not I, I don't I don't see the point of putting a weight on DSO. Yes, it can explode, and it's worth having the Bitcoin and Ethereum of DSO, which Right now, it's probably Veracity and, and Deso. Um, tacky, and, tacky and Play are low caps. And yeah, they probably would fly on a Deso narrative. And I see why, actually. Because now I'm seeing more and more content creators just being banned off YouTube. I don't know why at all. But they are. So it is actually fueling a need for a decentralized video platform. But it's the content creator's curse. Like... Whenever somebody gets banned, so I remember when, you know, people like Ben Armstrong, me, um, George, um, other people have been banned 
other crypto YouTubers have been banned. And people say, oh, go to, go to, um, whatever, BitTube or, or, or D, DTube or Hive or whatever. And the, the fact is there's no traffic. There's no one on there. So although there is a screaming demand for decentralized social media, there is no, there is no tomorrow. There is no decent platform yet. And I think DSO is the closest thing to friends tech there is. So therefore, DSO and veracity. But I don't think I'll bother. I think, don't think I'll really bother anymore with... I'll probably look for others or hope, hope that in the next market there'll actually be some decent um, video platforms. But NFT's not great. Not a surprise. If you go on OpenSea, NFTs are still not doing that great. And I think that um, the, the, they've all had a ra round about similar. They've all been about similar. There's not been any that have carried the other. What the fuck are they? NFTs. Oh, yeah. Mutable X, actually. That's done well. But the rest of them... It's just been a bit... Just been a bit nothing. So yeah, maybe Immutable X did carry them a bit. That's probably because Alex Becker uh, and Elio spoke about them recently. So yeah, so not a great, not a great. And identity pointless at this stage, pointless. Layer zero, not great. Base blockchain, it's still a bear market. It's not no point. And DAG, that's a very surprising one actually. I think that. I think that Casper has had all the concentration. It's, it's appealed to the DAG people, and it's appealed to the proof-of-work people as well. So it's like, those who were probably interested in the likes of Kadena, Hedera, Phantom, and all that, are probably, actually, let's just go Casper. And then they'll probably come back to Hedera later. So if we have a look at DAG... What the fuck? Yeah, Phantom is the one that's probably done the best, and the rest have been a bit pathetic. Shimmer, not even going to bother. I don't think I'll even bother in that, because I don't think anybody's ever spoken about it. I think I only put Shimmer in there, because there's hardly any DAGs. Um, Alice Zero, as I've said to you, you know, it doesn't stack up. It's a high market cap for a, a coin hardly anyone knows about. So I I'd expect it hardly moves. So anyway, yeah, so that is showing you um, the narratives that have exploded the most. So what this has done is this has said to me, right, Supo, let's look at investing in where the money is attracted. And that at the moment is DeFi, so Hex and Zen. If you're in my DCA Mastermind group, you'll know that I have bought a lot, a lot of these two. Um, meme I like. I like Wojak, I like Doge Chain, I like Pepe as well. Flocky, I want it to come down more before I get into it. Um, so yeah, so those two, and then games devs, and then launch pads. And then, of course, the next Solanas, the next ETHs, the next Avalanches, the next, well, Terra Luna of the last cycle. I still am into those. So in the new layer ones, I think this is, it, it'll take a little bit more time. But I think a lot of the reason why these have struggled is because they started off at very high market caps. But, um, yeah, but basically what this is saying to me is game devs DeFi, and by DeFi, the simple DeFi. So, Injective, it's gone, too far gone now. But Hex and Zen, I mean, Hex was the best performer of the last ball market, and it's because of his simplicity, also because of Richard Hart. And I think Zen just has very, very similar attributes. And then games devs, and there's then launch pads. Those these should be really where there's a heavier weight. Maybe not so much meme, because memes are very seasonal. Whereas DeFi games devs launch pads are bull market. They do well in bull markets. Whereas memes do kind of well at the end of a bull market. So yeah, so that is where the majority of my attention will go to. So now I'm going to talk about what I'm looking to get in. But before I do that, let me just have a look at what you guys are saying. I really should have bought a drink. Um, okay, Ermias 
A fesh feshe. Thank you very much for the twenty pounds. Um, yes. Do you want to make five, ten, a thousand, a million X in the next bull market? You will, because you have got ZSS Becker Karma. <laughs> That's a new one. That's a new one. It's an Easter egg. <laughs> new subscriber. I appreciate the quality content. Thank you very, thank you very much, Ermias. I appreciate that dramatically. Thoughts on Jerry calling Chainlink crap? Um, look, I like Jerry, so I'm not going to put him down. But that was a that was a bad call. Lindsay Gardner, good evening to you, Superman. Smash the like button for the light light live stream. Yeah, thank you for the reminder, Lindsay. I appreciate that. So, people, if you could be so kind. Wow, there's 901 of you, you beauties. If you could. I haven't had this many people watching me since 2017. If you just smash that like button, I would be very, very happy. It's so simple, and it, and it, and it encourages me to make more regular content. So, thank you very much, Lindsay. I appreciate that. So, you, you have to get uh, this one. We're not worthy. We're not <laughs> <laughs> I love that. What a Sunday treat. Thanks, Super. No, thank you very much. Oh, shit. I've just realised. I haven't even posted this on on Twitter. See how quick. Just like that. Done and done. Oh, sh yeah. Done and done. Yeah. Um... Mmm. Bear the German Rottweiler. $9.99. Thank you. I've been, I'm a beginner and I've been following you since day one. You have taught me a lot. I have two boys. I want to show them a better life. Excellent. That's exactly what I want you guys to do. That's precisely um, what I am going for. So, you are definitely going to get... In the crib, ma. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> Gotta be very, very quick with that. I don't want to get copyrighted. Um, JCRs, Rs. Can you look up hundred? I know I shouldn't be despondent when. Let me just have a quick look at hundred then. I'm not expecting to be bowled over. What do you mean the BSC one? Like it's just on both chains, like. There is no difference. There's no difference. They're both the fucking same, no? Anyway. 14 something market cap. Um, I just, I don't get it. You just turn 100 into... That's such a shit. Link. That's such a dumb link. I mean, Shiba I get. Flocky I get. Pepe I get. Wojak I get. But what the fuck? We just turned 100. Ugh, come on now. What a stupid thing to be making a coin about. I don't quite get it. Something must be going on behind the scenes for this to have had such a fucking pump. But to me, it just looks stupid. I'm not at all interested. Um, Alex Becker bought Network. What do you think? Um, I think Network is okay from a, uh, a fundamental perspective, actually. Um, yeah, I was actually going to buy this at seven cents. How long ago was it at seven cents? Yeah, um, it was about... Two months ago? Yeah, two months ago. Was it? So actually, it was seven cents last month. Um, yeah, but I thought, wait till a bull market, because then Alex will talk about it, and then he'll just pump my bag. That's, that's, that's really um, one, of the, that's one of the good reasons to get into games coins, is because Alex Becker will, ju will just pump your bag. Simple as that. And the guy has just, he's just got an insane amount of subscribers. Um, uh, 
the hell? Why is this thing so confusing? Um, oh, Ermias, again, thank you very much. £20 again! I actually watched Alex Becker's recent video, not as good as yours. Well, I appreciate it. That is high praise because, you know, the guy is pumping his arms and, you know, really, really assertive and stuff. But he is brilliant. He is brilliant. But for the 20 quid, thank you very much. You are going to get some gifts up Aikido from Andrew Taylor's special one. Special one. 4 a.m. Aikido. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that guy. Um, so thank you very much, um, yes. I appreciate uh, your lovely feedback. SBA, super, you're the man. What do you think of coin, coin os? Uh, nothing, to be honest. But um, as you paid eleven euros, I will take a quick look because that would be disingenuous of me not to. So, coin os. Well, firstly, it's been around a fucking long time. It's got no relevance. 13 million with only 250,000. And this is uh, this is during a, a like a bull phase. So that's pretty crap. 7 cents up to Jesus. It did a 10x in Oh, that was years ago. That was back in the bull run. So Oh, it's never even had a market cap. Uh, let's have a look. What is Coin Os? No gas fees. First three to use blockchain, so that's good. Viral. Ab look at that market. Look at that. That is a, that is that. If you're a crypto project, are you happy with that as your window? Right. It, when people go to your website, it should be right. Let's make the most impressive shop front. So that we attract the retail investor. It's simple. No gas fees. First three to use blockchain. But what a shit name for starters. And absolutely awful aesthetics. It could do well. But through osmosis. It won't do well. Because it's fundamentally good. So that's my that's my opinion. It's been around a while. So I don't even know why anybody would buy that crap. So I hope that, that satis my review satisfies... Uh, satisfies you. Roshan, what, what, what's the max price you see Seedify going to in bull? Oh, I could go to like $50. B um, launchpad tokens just blow the roof off. And in the last market, it went up to $26, didn't it? And that was really only being around for part of the bull cycle. Like Seedify came out, it came out, it's a lot older, it's a lot newer than Dalme, no, it's a lot newer than Polka Starter. Um, yeah, so it came out kind of, I think it was, I think it actually uh, came out quite late in the last bull market and still went to $26. So I think next time being around for a whole bull market, and of course, what you're going to see is you're going to get people, they're going to they're gonna see how well coins launching out of Seedify do, and then they'll be like, I, I want to get a bit. I want to just, just get a bit. So they'll buy some Seedify to stake and then take part in, the IDOs, and they're just going to be doing that right up until the end. So, yeah, could go $50, could be even more than that. So, thank you very much for the two pounds. Chain gains crypto. Thoughts on CKB? Um, I've never heard of it. I have a quick gander. Quick. Oh, nervous. I don't know why it didn't... That's a stupid ticker. CKB. It's nothing like nervous. Um, not a lot. There's a load of layer ones. There's a load of layer ones, and this is not one that is exciting in any in any sh way, shape, or form. And it's already a high market cap, and it's old. Nah, fucking crap. It's had more than enough time to <laughs> to make an impact, and it hasn't. Um, Van Ruben. Hi, Supo. Thanks for the great info. Star Launch came out of the last bull market, so it hasn't had a hype cycle yet, but did 300x back then. It being a gaming launch pad on Solana, what are your thoughts? That's a great question, Van Ruben. And first of all, let me give you, um, uh, which one should we give you? 1499. That's, that's pretty decent. Let's give you the people's elbow. The people's elbow. The people's elbow. 
<laughs> I love this. The Rock looks like me. Walla, 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 bang! Dead Steve Austin. I'll answer that very, very shortly. Okay, I'll come on to that. So, so keep watching. Moon Knight, thank you very much for the 27 SEK. Really appreciate that. It's your first, first super chat. So thank you very much. Um, oh, what the hell? Oh, no. There we are. Um, Mobland. Good question, Ghostbusters. I'll have a ch I'll check that out. And delicious. Five euros. Love your content. You are the only one I trust. Keep up these analysis and picks. Thank you very much, and delicious. I appreciate that. Um, om, 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 om. Let's give you some liquid. So <laughs> not not you literally. And, and you're fine. <laughs> um, well, you, you have to be liquid. Um, uh... <laughs> I think I'm the only one that has these screens on YouTube. Downmaker or Cedify? It's not even a question, is it? Let's have a look. Let's have a look at launch pads. Downmaker fifty five percent. What a what an embarrassing. No, wait a minute. Yeah, what an embarrassing gain. Fifty five. That is just unacceptable, to be honest. In a bullish phase, 55 puts you 7 from bottom. So, Cedify without doubt, Swim Mom. Cedify without doubt. But only at a better price. But I still don't think Dowmaker is... Nah. 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 <laughs> Super, I never talked about liquid staking derivatives. No, when I made these, um, actually, that should be under DeFi, but um, I have spoken about liquid staking, but it's not really my thing. I'm not a DeFi YouTuber, right? Liquid staking is pretty cool. I like Tenet. I don't like Lido. Tenet has got gains potential, but, um, and that that could do well. I like I like Tenet. I, I talked about that in my... Um, and my narratives, my um, my uh, my altcoin tier list thing. Right, okay, people. So let's have a look at what I am looking to buy in in the next bull market and why. Okay, so um, there is a point in this video where Alex Becker says that one of the most important things in the gaming ecosystem is the gaming infrastructure. So one of the reasons why he really likes Immutable X and why he talks about Immutable X is because it offers you the opportunity to build uh, gaming projects on their own chain. Um, I need to find it, though. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. We're still waiting Love this for guy. the all-time high right here. If we return to that, it's a 5X. What you need to understand is that Whatever layer two or whatever layer one is used for gaming is going to explode. And if you there we are. That is precisely the bit I wanted to show you. Look at the market cap for this. Yeah, it's a it's a billion dollars right now. Right. So anyway, so like this guy said, um, you know, the guy who said these are outdated. This is an outdated list. The most modern version of Immutable X. Well, there's two. There's Miria. And there's this, Oasis. Now, I think that Oasis is unpumped. This came out latter part of last year, December last year. And it's totally unpumped at this point. Lots of cryptocurrencies have pumped, but no one knows about this. And therefore, it kind of means it's at the bottom, and yet it does what Immutable X does. So, where you see Immutable X is $1 billion in market cap. Oasis is 50 million. And Oasis is even better than Immutable X because Immutable X is essentially a layer two for gas fees, right? It's a, as, as Alex said, he's like layer one, layer two, but he had to say layer two because he knows Immutable X is not a layer one, right? Immutable X is just a pure layer two for Ethereum, right? And Ethereum only 
Now, yes, it's got great adoption, but Oasis are a much grander vision, in my opinion, because they offer layer ones and twos, right? They offer both. So they offer the hub layer, which is the layer one, all right? So this is, uh, this is allowing for games to build on the blockchain, okay? For you know, financial transactions, for, um, you know, all of the various different functions that you do, minting and, well, not the minting, I said, not the NFT stuff, but you have your app built on the hub layer, all right? And like it says here, it's basically, it's got the same block time as Ethereum, but they use optimistic roll-ups, right? So they've got like the security of how the Ethereum blockchain works, but they've got the scalability of a layer two. So they've already got optimistic roll-ups working on their hub layer, so therefore it's a very fast layer one. But then they got the verse layer, and the layer and the verse layer is layer two. So what every game can have is they can have their own layer one, right? So it's not a layer one that is a holistic layer one. So like you've got with Aptos, Sui, Nia, Solana, all of these, everything takes place on one blockchain, right? So if you've got so Solana will have Bonk, it's got Monkey Ball, it's got all these different other Solana cryptocurrencies they're all using the solana blockchain the one blockchain right whereas with oasis every cryptocurrency has their own layer one so that means that they don't have the problems of scalability and then they've got this layer two for nft so they basically got exactly what immutable x offers and the good thing is is that oasis is actually evm compatible as well so that means that it's actually functional with Ethereum. It's actually functional with Ethereum. An Ethereum-based dApp. So if you create a dApp for Oasis, that dApp can port to Ethereum or vice versa. So it's not like you've got to, you've got to know a completely different skill set, a different, um, a different code set as a developer. You just need that one code set. So that's what makes Oasis really good. And the other thing I love about Oasis is who is part of the Oasis team, the Oasis validators, the Oasis investors. Sega. Now, if you're a 90s kid like I am, Sega was part of my growing up. It was part of my childhood. It's one of the big Japanese games, uh, gaming names. Then they've got Jump, which are also big in, in gaming and uh, in top ecosystems too. And another huge name is this one, Bandai Namco. So if you ever played PlayStation, where you had Namco at the beginning, or when you played Time Crisis or whatever, that's these guys, man. Like, these, this is the mainstream. To me, this is the mainstream coming into crypto. And I just don't think anybody really truly knows about it that much yet. But there are a lot of businesses that are building with Oasis and Activision have partnered with Oasis as well. So if we just have a look at the games, there's quite a few games. Look, these are all the ones that have, have got their own layer ones. So these are this is Chain Guardians. Chainverse. They're hosted on Oasis. MCH, I don't know. MCH necessarily, but look, they've got a ton of games. So look, this they've got their own layer one called the MCH Verse. They've got their own layer one. Crypto Heroes, Chain Coliseum. I think if Alex Becker saw this, he would probably he'd probably Yeah, he'd most probably just like uh I was gonna say something disgusting, so I won't I won't. But um but I think he'd be well excited by this because this is exactly what he was talking about in his video. He's talking about infrastructures and he's talking about Immutable X, which is a billion dollar market cap. And this one is 50 million and it's a layer one and layer two. And it's EVM compatible too, so it doesn't even miss out on that. So you've got all these layer ones, uh, all these games within these layer ones. So I don't know what TTCG is, but this is just an example of... Uh, of a project that is running all their games off Oasis. So there is adoption happening here. It's just that no one really knows about it at this point. So this is one I'm going to take a big position in because, as I said, this is new, relatively. It's totally unpumped. Like, this is done... 
It's gone from... It's basically, it's, it's IDO price. It's IDO price three cents. It's never gone below its IDO price, and it's really close to it now. And, yeah, where it's gotten to, it got to four cents at its low. I did DCA into this on the way down. I didn't quite get it at the low. But um, I only took a small DCA. But I'm going to take a much bigger DCA. So there's Oasis, and then there is Miria as well. So Miria is... is it's like a cross between Immutable X and Gala. So why I like Miria, and I think it's a little bit high now. When I first spoke about Miria, it, Miria, it was 1.2 cents. So I'm going to hope it's going to go down again. But Miria is two things. I hate it when it does this shit. I hate it when any website does that. But um, Miria is two things. Number one, it's a gaming arcade, gaming ecosystem. So it's just like Gala in that respect. And they have, they are also a layer two. So that means that any 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 um, Ethereum based games that are built for Miria uh, have got a natural layer two, a layer two layer two layer that is actually built, or should I say, built in partnership with Starkware. So Starkware is in the latest technology of zk rollups. So where you've got optimistic rollups with the likes of Arbitrum and Optimism, you've now got ZK rollups, which is also very, very exciting. And actually, with the new EIP, I think it's 418, it's going to be making ZK rollups actually operate 10 times faster than optimistic rollups. So this is, a, this is having exposure to Starkware technology, Layer 2 technology, and a games developer at the same time. So it's like everything in one. And I looked at the team... You can go back to my review of the team, but um, the team... Oh, fuck off. The team consists of leading developers and managers from Ubisoft, Activision, EA, Blizzard, Marvel, Riot Games, Gameloft, Epic Games, Goldman Sachs, and Tencent. Tencent. And I looked into, in that video, I did a full review on all of the staff members that came from these businesses and they look like they've got very good experience and when you work for because i remember back in 2017 the quality of what a gaming crypto looked like then was like just your average person that decided to create a cryptocurrency that's what it was they had no experience or they they maybe did developing in their room or something like that in this era of gaming what you've got is you've got the big league developers from Ubisoft, Activision, EA. This is the creme. This is these all of these names, except for Goldman Sachs and Tencent. All of the rest of these names on and Marvel. All of these names are the equivalent of what we're trying to build in crypto. We're trying to build the next EA, the next Ubisoft, the next you know, Blizzard, the next Activision. So the fact that all of the people, all that they've got a ton of people have come from all of these entities makes it one of the most likely, potentially, to be the next EA or something like that. Now, I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of development needed for this, but this is what you get when you invest in a bear market. You get the dregs-ish. So it's outside the top 500. You get a cryptocurrency that is not yet fully developed in terms of the website isn't looking great. The technology they're boasting isn't necessarily looking great. The games they've already built aren't looking great. That's what you get in a bear market. And then during the course of a bull market, you then get a, you then get more listings. You get more games, more substance as a result. Therefore, more adoption and therefore more speculation. And you get the roadmap and everything. So in a bull market is when they fly, right? And then they kind of stay in an accumulation phase during a bear market because you kind of... You kind of think, well, if I was running a cryptocurrency, I would think I'll just leave it till the bull market to bring out these updates. Why bring out now, get a quick 20% and then you dump straight away? Why bother? So th these guys are waiting for a bull market and that's what you get when you invest during a bear market. You're getting it in a not great condition on the proviso that when a bull market comes they'll actually do better and the, the Miria website I imagine will look way better than this crap next is shrapnel shrapnel I definitely want in on 
Shrapnel I'm very, I very, very, very much like, simply because, although it's not a game's developer, this is a new game, this is the new Alluvium. Alluvium came out March 2021, which is when I invested in it. And that's a long time ago, right? Now, it came out March 2021. It came out at about $38. Cents, $38. I bought it at about $48. And then it rocked it up to $3,000, right? It may do that again, but the chances of it happening again are lower than it would be with Shrapnel. So Shrapnel is, is as Alluvium was, that first potential AAA really high quality graphics, great quality team, supreme marketing, cryptocurrency gaming project that could be that dap that gets the mainstream in. I think that is where gaming, that's where all the speculation is leading to, is finding that dap that people are going to play and that's going to lead to the adoption and therefore lead to the massive multipliers. And Shrapnel, to me, is in the top four of being able to do that. All right, so we've got Star Atlas, Illuvium, Mines of Delania. Those three are excellent games for different reasons. Very high quality games. Then I would say Shrapnel. And then I would say probably Sidus Heroes, I think. But Shrapnel's definitely in the top five at this point. Now, I'm not a Call of Duty gamer, right? So I don't gravitate to this type of game as I would for something like Mines of Delania or Star Atlas. But I completely see the appeal. Imagine being able to play a high quality game as good if you've watched the screen if you've watched the gameplay of Shrapnel, it's basically just like uh, it's just like Call of Duty. And like the newest Call of Duty has just come out. Right? So and it's a mega seller. And with Call of Duty, what do you get when you win a game? Ooh, get some XP. Big fucking whoop, right? Imagine you play Call of Duty, and let's think about it, right? There are tons of people out there that are really top-notch Call of Duty players, right? Imagine how much money they could make. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about, like, I'm talking about teenagers, young adults, right? That could make a living with shrapnel. And the thing is, is that I think people are more likely to play Shrapnel than they would be to play Illuvium. Because Illuvium is... What's Illuvium? Illuvium Space in Space is a 3D RPG, massive metaverse type game. But, you know, when you, when you... I've looked at the beta gameplay of it, and they give no instructions. You don't really know what you're fucking doing, and you're, in, you're all alone in this in this metaverse world. Whereas Shrapnel, you know what you're doing. You're going in there, you got a gun, you got a bunch of comp you got a bunch of enemies, you kill them, you win the game, you win money. That's why I think Shrapnel's really good. And the other reason I love Shrapnel is because of Avalanche. So, like, like I said in the last video, I'm looking for cryptocurrencies that are looking to be like the ERC-20 of the last cycle. So they are the, you know, the Avalanche DAP, the Solana DAP, and that's what Shrapnel is. So Shrapnel, by right, should work faster because Alluvium is Ethereum and they use Immutable X, right? So it's it, it adds a level of complexity. With shrapnel, with um shrapnel, you're just on that ch you're just on the chain, right? And and avalanche um avalanche is a great chain. Like I bought something on avalanche yesterday, and uh, it, it it went through it went through in seconds, it went through in seconds. And um, that shows you, and it was it was cheap as shit as well. I didn't even look at the I didn't even look at the gas price because I knew it was going to be pathetically small. So shrapnel. There's so many reasons why it should do well. But on the other side of the equation, on the goods, uh, this is encouraging to me anyway, they have only got 175 million out of, uh, of in circulation, 5% out in circulation, which, uh, which is out of 3 billion shrapnel. So over the course of time, I imagine there's going to be a high amount of dilution and this could come down so right now it's had his Alex Becker pump. Alex Becker talked about it yesterday. He didn't really say anything about it. He said nothing about it. He didn't even need to. He just said shrapnel and people bought. So anyway, so it went up. Um, 
<laughs> Nearly 2x. <laughs> Fuck this guy, man. He is his own 100x making machine, Alex Becker. He can just... He could just look at a coin. He could just go... He could just go to UFO. Let's imagine he did a live stream right now. He could just go to UFO. He goes, ah, I'm going to butt. All right, you want to make five, ten, thousand, million X? You got to get UFO. There we are. Done and dusted. It goes up 100X. If he does that in a bull market, it'll go up 20X in a day. Fucking... Imagine having that power. He must hate it in a way. Because there's so much responsibility when you've got that much power. Anyway, never mind. So, um, yeah, so... <laughs> That was just a, a little, um, so he hardly even spoke about shrapnel, but I do think it's, it's one of the cryptocurrencies that's got potential to be the next game. So wait for the hype to die down, wait for the Alex Becker, um, you know, <laughs> hype to go down a bit. It's already gone down to 10 cents. It has come up a little bit, but yeah, this, this go down. Let's go down. And I would say a good price to buy this, it came out at 3 cents. So that is the open price. In essence, that you could call it the IDO price. So I would say five to seven cents is a good price, I would say. Not necessarily bottom, but I'd say a good price, good DCA price. Next, you know already my opinion. Gamey, I love Gamey. So Gamey is well outside the top 500. And as I've said with my spreadsheet, coins that are outside the top 500 are the ones that uh, th that have the most explosive gains. This one's two cents, which admittedly, um, you know, if you look over a seven day view, you're like, oh, I missed the pump. If you look over a month view, oh, I missed the pump. I missed four X. Who cares, actually? Yes, I am waiting for this to go down a lot. But, okay, it was a bit more, it was a 10 X. But, but it's still, you missed the beginning part. Okay, you missed the beginning part. I want it, I would want it to go well under a cent before I got into it. But, you know, you're looking at a tiny market cap. If this goes to... And look at it. Look at it. The branding looks insane. Um, it's mobile gaming. It's infrastructure. It's basically... You know, if, if, you, if you watch the whole of Alex Becker's video, he talks about... Altura. <laughs> what the fuck? Altura. I mean, Altura is not a bad project. Don't get me wrong. But um, it's old. It's old. And it's 40 million market cap. So to me, Gamey looks way better as an uh, investment. To me, it's new. It's, well, it's not necessarily newer. It's around about similar age, but has had no hype. Altura's had a lot of hype. It's got Animoca Brands, it's got Binance Labs, it's got Google Launchpad Accelerator. So, this to me, this to me uh, looks very exciting. And like I said, and even Alex Becker said it too. Um, mobile gaming is a huge growth area. Because, I actually it was me that said this bit. Um, because when it comes to downloading games... Uh, onto your computer, you don't really want that. You want, you know, you want to be able to just, you want to be able to just download it on this, right? And then if you want to play with friends, so this is, looks like it's, you know, playing with friends, mobile gaming. If you want to play it with friends, just get, you know, get your brother, your mother, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, whatever, to download it, play it, you both earn. It's so much simpler. I have I have seen so many crypto games where you've got to download the thing and you just can't be bothered with it. So you just forget it. This is bringing it to... This is making it accessible. I still haven't really looked into NASA. Why NASA? But um, that's pretty exciting too. The next one is playable. I spoke about it in the last one. I'm going to get this one. I'm definitely going to get it. Um, 
It's 12 million at this point. And yeah, I mean, I'm not a person that likes missing the boat. This has done a kind of 5x. It'll die down. It'll go back. Not necessarily that quickly. But I really want this one because this, again, is an arcade. They've got a partnership with Epic Games. And they are on Avalanche. So, in the last bull market, Avalanche did not have a hype cycle for its tokens. So, there was one crypto that I got in last year for on the proviso that I could, I could capitalize on Avalanche Gaming. Meta Derby was the first game that came out on Avalanche. It's actually going up right now, but look, I mean, there's hardly any volume. This thing would pump like shit off a stick with one trade. But the problem with Meta Derby on Avalanche, the problem with Meta Derby is, is that they don't look like they're active anymore. I think it's the same people that bought out Meta Gods and Meta Wars on an assumption. I don't know for sure. But, um, you know, Alex Becker was talking about D race. And I mean, D race is what? And D race is a horse play, a horse racing game. 28 million. And you got Meta Derby, which is basically at this point worth hardly anything. And. Hold on a minute. I just want to show you how it looks. It looks fucking amazing. Mm. Ru no, it's not that. Watch, watch. This is how to see kind of just how it looks if there are any races going on right now. So a good thing about a lot of games is, is that they build it so that the the game can just run. Oh, this is annoying. Oh, hold on. Let's have a look. Oh, what the fuck? Connect. I want to connect. Ah, fuck this. Anyway, it's really cool. The horse racing is ace. It looks really good. Let me see if I can... Um... Just to show you. Just so you know what it looks like. Gameplay. No, you can't really see it. It's really cool though. It's very it's a basically it's a future it's a futuristic looking game. Futuristic looking horse racing. There we are. And what you do is you either have I don't know why I'm talking about this, but you either have a horse which you breed and train or you are there as a spectator and you just bet on the horses and it is really good i mean i've looked at it recently and it looks even better than this but i just don't think that they're uh, active anymore but um i was watching a few races and i just thought this is awesome i would love to because i love horse racing anyway so um I don't know quite why I went into a whole discussion about it. Um, but anyway, yeah. So um, so Avalanche, I think, moving into the next bull market, I think that they're going to um, they're gonna have their hype cycle. Their ecosystem's going to have a hype cycle. Just like Ethereum in 2020, 21. I think next time playable. Uh, and I love the name. I love the name. Their marketing is great. It's on point. And they're very, very, they're very, very small at this point also. And this has got dilution ahead of it, so again, it could it could um, bring some great buying opportunities. But the game quality looks excellent. Like this Nexus, for instance, looks looks incredible. Haven't looked at the others so much, but I can imagine that they're also you know, pretty high quality too. So playable. It's games developers top niche avalanche. It's going to have its next hype cycle, so I definitely want in on this. So, Shrapnel will be my game play on uh, Avalanche, and Playable will be my developer play on Avalanche. And then Games for a Living, you know already, I've taken a bit of a position, not enough of a position, 
The five hundred dollars I put in is now worth what? Four K or something? Five K? So fucking annoying. But um, you know, I do think this is going to have a good bull market. I do think that they have they've added supply. So when I first bought it, it had 3% of supply. Now it's got 11% of supply. And that's taken the market cap from 5 million, 3 to 5 million to 42 million. So it has increased a lot. But I do think that this one's a very strong one. And again, one that Alex Becker will probably talk about. You know, because you know, like, like, like this guy said, it is an outdated list. And this is going to encourage, I'm not going to lie, because Alex Becker did... Have a go at this guy. He told him off. He ca called him a dweeb. He said, he said, um, yeah, I'm not going to list new games under under 10 million market cap or suggest them to beginners. And I announced which bags I know. And I told people literally not to buy. Only person trying to pump anything, you and your brand, by using my name, you little dweeb. Right? So he was very harsh on him. But I think it's made him, I do think, being a content creator myself and being somebody who's if he was called out like he's he's got so many he's got so many fans he's got so many followers he's gonna be he's gonna feel called out he's gonna feel like right okay he's right uh, after he looks past the 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 trolling he's gonna think he's right a lot of the games i talk about are from the last cycle and now i should talk about new games and so he's gonna look for the next new games because during a bull market, I imagine Alex Beck is going to make a video every every couple of weeks. To make a video every couple of weeks, and so Gates for a Living, he's undoubtedly going to talk about because it's like the it's like the next gala, and it's very early stage at this point. So Gates for a Living, I will I will hope I hope it goes down a lot more. Um, if it if it doesn't, I might just I might just put in. I might just have to put in a little bit more than I wanted to. Because really, the whole the whole reason why I'm waiting for optimal buy prices, this is the secret, okay? The reason I'm waiting for optimal buy prices is so I don't have to put as much in. So now, Games for a Living is, let's say, 8x more than it was when I first invested in it. To get the equivalent amount of Games for a Living that I got when I put 500 in it before means I'd have to spend... 4,000 for the same amount, right? And so what I want to do is I want to be very economical with the return on investment. So I'm putting in not as much, but then the return is insane. So that's why I wait for optimal buy prices. It's not a case of, oh, I just want to be right or I, I really want a recession. I'm bu bu more bullish than anyone. But I want to use the opportunity of a bear market to get everything that literally is so cheap you don't have to put as much in. And that means your money travels so much further. And if you were to put, let's say, 10k in at, at 0 0.005, which is when I got in and I should have put 10k in, then, you know, it won't cost you 100,000 for the same amount of tokens 10x later, like it would now. So that's why I want optimal buy prices. And it, it should be obvious, but... That's why. So that I literally can just get these games at rock bottom and get a beautiful beautiful amount as well. So that in the bull market, I just sit back and wait. I'm seeing a lot of people on YouTube and on Twitter that are saying, oh, take profits. Make sure to take profits. No. No. That's not the game. Right? The game is that you... Um, you but you DCA. So like I did here, all these DCAs, which are very, very close to the lowest bear prices on a lot of occasions. Not for Hello. But what's for Games for a Living, for instance? So you buy you buy at the bottom and you never have to sell. Well, you sell at the end of the bull market, but you don't have to sell. You don't have to worry about profits. You don't have to worry, oh I made a 5X. I better sell. No. Because 5X is is wank. Right, we're talking about fifty, a hundred x's from up, from bottom prices wherever they land. We're talking about fifty x's. You sell at five x. You can't get back in at the low point. You sell on an assumption that you hope you'll get back to a low that you can reinvest it and then have a free bag, basically. But in my opinion, no. You buy it, you hold it for the entirety 
of the bull market. You don't sell. Unless there's an obvious sub-season, like in DeFi, like in 2021, in between January and, and May 2021, that was a DeFi-specific narrative. You had to sell. You didn't necessarily know that was going to be the end of it, but that that makes you wise for the next time. You know that these narratives are very, very... It happens for a little part of the bull cycle. It's gone, and then another narrative comes along. So that's really what you want to do. You want to just buy, and you don't want to have to think about it again. And the games for a living I've bought, yeah, I've made a huge profit on it. I'm not selling it. Even if it went right back down to 0.005, I ain't selling it. As far as I'm concerned, I'm holding it now till the end. And that's what I plan to do with all of them. Right, so I've spoken about the games development uh, part of it. Now I'm going to move on to another part. So just before I do that, I have seen more Super Chats. So let me just get to Lee's. What the fuck? Oh, Jesus, I've got a load of Super Chats. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. Mohamed Parvez, thank you for the two pounds. I appreciate that. Oh, hold on. JC Rs. Bear with me a second. T49MX. Oh, <laughs> it's $14. I thought 249 Was that Mexican pesos, is it? I thought, oh, that's a lot of money, but it's not. 100 is a meme coin with utility, which solves two crypto problems, which is... 100 hour hold code. Oh, okay. All oh, right, okay. So there is actually a meaning behind the 100. Yeah, but think of it. I, w I looked at it as a retail investor would look at it and it said nothing nothing good. So I get it. I get it. But it's just not for me. It sounds stupid. Two pound Wag Me Games review. Much appreciated. I looked at, um, I looked at Wag Me Games in the last video and... It's good. It's got one game at this point. Um, Roshan. Would I be mistaken putting 75% of my portfolio in game, DeFi and pads? Is it too risky going heavy on three narratives? Also seems to be where the money is. Yeah. I mean, the, the information tells you all. Now, if yeah, there will be some sub-narratives. There'll be probably a DeFi, a DSO, a AI and those narratives. But um, the ones that are bull market friendly, i.e. they're kind of evergreen, are meme. Well, not me, not necessarily meme. Meme is more seasonal, like end of end of a bull run kind of thing. Um, is DeFi, games developers and launchpads. Well, de games developers and launchpads really is what it boils down to. Just those two. They're the most explosive, from my experience in a bull market. The last bull market. All of my gains. I mean, look. I say at the beginning of every video. Look, I called it. I, yeah, I called it. Yeah, it's that way. I called out the great and the good. And look, they're all either launch pads or gaming. Um, all layer ones. Very early. Cry War game. Star Atlas game. Game zone launch pad. 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 Game. Launch pad. So. <laughs> The the experience I have is, is that launch pads and games are very, very lucrative in a bull market, regardless of what narrative is going on as well. So, yeah, so I would say it is risky, though. It is, everything in crypto is a risk. Oh, by the way, I better put this. As usual, nothing I say is to be construed as financial advice. Crypto is largely unregulated and high risk and people who invest should be prepared to lose all their money and everything I see to you in this video is for informational and educational purposes only. <laughs> Has to be said otherwise I have to take the video down. VindyXB, thank you for the 1799 Arab Emirates dirhams. I appreciate that. Holy fuck. Nicholas Elijah. $100 Fuck me, that's insane. Super, when you like something and you want to purchase for the next cycle and it continues to go up, at what point do you say now is the time? How do you balance the frustration or do you move on? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be brutally honest with you, Nicholas. Okay. 
regardless, wait, hold on. Before I am honest, I'm gonna. Um, you definitely deserve. You know, I wake all, up every morning. I'm best. like, oh my god, I'm living in Monaco. I'm living in a, in a dream. Really? Really? Yes. You know. And now you are Mr. Monaco. <laughs> You are the money. Thank you very much, Nicholas. So, in all honesty, all of my best, all of my best gainers. So, Phantom was a hundred x. Um, Ada was it Ada? No, no, it didn't. No, um, yeah, Phantom, Cryo War, Hex. Hmm. Tron pad. So a lot of my big gainers were on luck, right? No, not I don't mean the like how I how I found them, but how I solidified them. So for instance, Cryo War I got for about two cents at IDO and it went up to four dollars, right? So it made a mega pump, right? And I just thought, right, this looks this this was a great price, right? I just thought four forty four, great price. I'm gonna sell. It was on the way up. I I, I sold it at four forty four. I've, I've done my hundred x. I'm selling, right? It went to four sixty or four seventy, and then plummeted. Uh, uh, uh what five hundred x down? That that's what I sold was a huge amount. I bought like, yeah, it was. I'm not going to say how much, but it was a lot of money, right? Just for that little segment of Cryo War. And Phantom, I, because it, it, it rallied, and I bought Phantom at IDO, and I and they and they had their own chain, and I was thinking, oh shit, have I, have I not done a token swap? Am I going to lose my token? So I sent my tokens over to Binance, and they were already on Binance, and I thought, wow, I've made a massive multiplier, so I sold it. And I did the same with Star Launch as well in the last in the last market, but I didn't sell all of it. I sold a bit of it, and um, I got those gains pure. I I I because I thought that the bull market would last until March twenty twenty two, and um, I just sold because I thought the prices looked good, or because or by accident, right? Like for instance, Voyager. On the day I sold Voyager or Ethos. It was because every 10,000 ethos I had was worth 10 bitcoins. And I had hundreds of thousands of ethos. So I thought, well, the conversion's great. I thought ethos could go to $40, but, and at that point it got to $10. But I was like, oh, that's just, because I was thinking, oh, Bitcoin might go up and I won't have that conversion. So I sold the lot, well, not the lot, four fifths of it for Bitcoin. And the next day it crashed, right? So you, you, it's it's impossible to time the bottom and the top. But I would say that timing the top was harder. Timing the top was harder, and that's why this time I've got buy prices. I'm sorry, sell prices on my on my spreadsheet. Okay, so I've got my um, minimal buy-in. I've got my bull prediction. If it hits these predictions, I'll sell, basically. And look, in a lot of cases, 100, 100, 167. I haven't updated this in a while, so there could be a little bit of tweaking needed. But that's how I decide now. It's on a price. But in the past, I've got to be honest, it's been by accident. I didn't know when the bull market... You don't know when the bull market's going to end. You just never do. So thank you for the question, and I hope it gave a great answer. Roshan, five pounds. I've not bought any cryptos yet. Should I one wait for recession, two begin DCA now, or three wait till this bear mark, but this bear rally cools and then begin DCA? My all right. So I'm just going to answer from my personal perspective. So I, I can't tell you what to do. I can't give financial advice, etc. But um, what I would do is I'd wait. I will only buy on lows. I won't buy when the charts up and to the right. I just won't do that. So for instance, I bought Moonbeam initially too high. If I'm honest, with you. My, my first buy of Moonbeam was over a fucking dollar, right? I did inch in. I did like, I spent like $200, right? Um, but that's not the point. The point is, is it was on the way down as it was, 
right? So if I just go back to all time. So when I bought it was um, March, not March, um, May, June 2022 after the Terra Luna collapse. Because Bitcoin went to 25k and I was like, right, this is finally time I can get into Moonbeam. Because Moonbeam had been too high for ages. It had been like, what, $5, $6? And I remember on Twitter, people were saying, oh, this is the last time you're going to buy Moonbeam under $6. Like, so, yeah, whatever. And um, anyway, I waited until it got to $1 and then I started buying. And then I inched in. But I waited till the till the chart was down and to the, was down and to the right. That's when... I started buying, and then I just inched in, inched in, inched in. My best, my biggest buy was at sixteen cents. No, that no, was at. S no, I think that my biggest buy was at sixteen eight, and then a lesser buy was at sixteen five. But I thought it was going to come down more than that. So yeah, I would buy. I would DCA when coins are down and to the right, not up and to the right. So however long you have to wait, um. You could wait for a recession, but something that I will say, and that's not to... Something I will say is that the, the inverted yield curve has uninverted a little bit, and it has slightly delayed a recession. But I do think it's going to happen within the next eight, eight months. I think it's going to happen within an eight-month window. And, and at the end of the day, that's all you can do. You're speculating. You don't know. I don't know a recession's going to happen. I don't know that we're going to have a massive crash. But what I can tell you is I do think we're going to have a big cool down from this whole speculative period. And I think it will come soon. Once this eight-day window, eight day window ends and people there's not an ETF, you know, people wait till January, it'll cool down. And only because this seven-day window, eight-day window opened up and then people started speculating. Oh, man, Joe Bars. That is some serious bars, Joe. Thank you very much for $50. You are definitely going to get... <laughs> Probably shouldn't have left that open-ended. Uh, the People's Elbow. The People's Elbow. The People's Elbow. What, 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 what. Bang, and you get the Monaco morning, car. Like, oh, my God, I'm living in Monaco. I'm living in a, in a dream. Really? Really? Yes. And... You're going to get the special. <laughs> Joe Bars, do you want to make 5, 10, 15, 1,000, a million X in cryptocurrency? You're just giving me a fantastic donation. So as far as I'm concerned, I give you ZSS Becker Karma. <laughs> Don't buy Cardano. I shouldn't have said that without the glasses. Because uh, people may use that as a clip. For the Cardano community. Anyway, no, thank you very much, Joe. You get the special uh, live Supo Man uh, stroke ZSS Pekka. <laughs> um, I've still got a lot more to do, people, so don't go away just yet. Uh, what do you think of Pulse Pad and Velas Pad? They're very contingent. They're very contingent. Pulse Pad, I should imagine, will be fine, even though it's not. I mean, Richard Hart and, in fact, the whole Pulse community. Are uh, they're very incestuous to be sexual, not sexual? I mean, <clears throat> so yeah, um, they're very incestuous, i.e., they like it all created within the community, they don't really like outsiders building on Pulse Pad or built or launching on Pulse Pad without having the say so from the Pulsicans. So, you know, you've had Teddy Bear, P. Die, and um, Aptro... I can't remember what. Some of these weird Pulse-based coins have been. But you have to kind of be born and bred out of the Pulse community. You can't just exist. You can't come out from outside it. Because Richard Hart was... He just, he just wants everything kind of vetted by him almost. And so do the Pulse community. So, but I do think that Pulse Pad, like any launch pad, is going to have its fair share of speculation. And like, like with Meta V Pad, BSC Pad, Ada Pad, it's going to be used as an additional pad for other launches. So, look, as far as I see it, and I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end. So, do not miss this alpha because it's very, very important. But there's a bit of alpha uh, I'm going to give you, but. The um, Bluezilla are going to be looking at, right, they're, they're, they got their eyes 
on the market. They're just like me. They see the op- they see opportunity early, right? So they're probably seeing Avalanche doing really well. They're seeing Solana do well. They're seeing maybe base blockchains going to start doing well. And they're going to have launch pads. So they're going to have maybe an AVAX pad, a base pad. What other narratives are there? Maybe games devs pad or so. Who knows? But there's going to be more launch pads, right? And they're going to be kind of like the... They're going to be the major launches. And being in Pulse Pad, being in Velas Pad, it all depends on if Bluezilla want to pump Velas Pad or Pulse Pad. Is if they don't, if, if if they're dying, they might just use Pulse Pad and Velas Pad. But Velas Pad is quite. I mean, something that's encouraging about this whole Solana uh, rise is it actually may make because Velas. The reason why Velas had such a great bull run last time was all because of Solana, and it was a Solana fork. So as Solana grew and did a 100x, so then did Velas. Velas did a, a uh, had a massive run up, and of course Velas had helped that. But I'm not necessarily sure how much Bluezilla are working with Velas anymore because a lot of things have changed at the top for Velas, and they've done made a lot of changes. They've taken their branding off Ferraris, so it all dependent on. Velas is 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 uh, not as strong as an ecosystem, but with what's happened with Solana, it might go up. And PulsePad, like I said, they're both risks. Hey man, I super chatted to you about C- uh, CDFI before the hype. Now I bring you Liquid Finance on Cardano. They're so different. Like CDFI is at least yeah, you know, it's got substance, but. Which is prime for Kano's first real DeFi bull market cycle. Yeah, but they've got Meld as well. And they've got Sunday Swap. Let me have a quick look at Liquid. And thank you very much for the $20 RNG Crypto. I appreciate that. Liquid Finance. Let's have a look at them. Mm, I don't like the coin price, but I very much like the market cap. Look at that. It's got one 2% of supply and circulation. Um, Cardano scan. That's crap. Is it? Is it crap? What's the? Is it Ada scan? I don't know, but there's a really good explorer for Cardano that actually gives you the amount of hodlers. Let's have a look and see if this is the one. Probably isn't. God, this is so slow. Come on, man. Aptos would load just like that. What the fuck? This is stupid. This is the one I was just on, isn't it? No, no. What? Oh, you know what? Fuck this. Uh, Okay, I'll take your word for it. Liquid finance. Total value locked, 27 million. That's insane. That's actually insane when you consider the market cap. Well, what's the fully diluted? 64 million. Actually, fully diluted supply. It's not doing so well. Oh, well, thank you very much for that. And I really appreciate the $20. Um, yeah, appreciate the $20. Let's do how this. How was the car physically? And a tire physically? And how are you physically? How w- <laughs> My favourite. How are you physically? That's a beauty. Um, the data is outdated. It will take seven years for fully diluted. And you have time to that site in Discord. I probably won't, but... Thank you for the tip. And you can come back to me and say, I told you about that. I mean, the thing is, it does kind of meld... Cardano ecosystem and DeFi, which as we've seen is the second best performing narrative. But I'm not a fan of that. And these are just, this this guy could be fucking anybody. So to me, I don't like it at all. Um, Okay, I think I've gone through all the super chats. So now I'm going to move on to the second part of this. This, I can't believe, how long have I been actually live? Oh shit, I've been on live for a while. I better hurry up then. Right, okay, so the second part of this 
is launch pads. So games developers and launch pads. So launch pads, to be honest, were, were a millionaire maker for me last year. Just those alone. Just those alone. Well, with Valhalla, so I remember... I remember... Bit of dead mouse there. I remember when I looked in my MetaMask and Valhalla had made me enough... One cryptocurrency had made me enough to buy a Rolls-Royce Phantom. One fucking cryptocurrency. <laughs> and that shows you that launch pads are mega money makers in a bull market. In a bear market... Oh my god, you lose money because no pro no projects launch. The teams that run the launch pads they just kind of go dead. But in a bull market, oh, it's very much alive. Tons of pipeline, tons of quality projects. They can vet them and they can really select the best of the best. If it's a good quality launch pad that have got high standards like Bluezilla do, so they make sure they get a project, they get them down to really good tokenomics, a good team. And they're able to um, they're able to launch it in a very very um, multiplier maker way, and that's what that's what that's why that's why you go to Bluezilla, you know, Meta V Pad, Valhalla Wagyu Swap, Astro Swap, Pulse Pad, KCC Pad, Ada Pad. These all came out of Bluezilla. These all made me a lot of money, and now they've all been basically brought right down to their their beginnings, their IDA prices, and you can just turn the faucet on. Well, that's what you say in America. Turn the tap on again. Turn the money printers on. So launch pads, as we've seen, are, you know, the, the fourth best narrative, and that's with just CDFI and Meta VPAD. Like, these two dragged it down. At least with DeFi, all four of these pumped up DeFi. So let's now have a look at Launchpad. So I brought you this this sheet, the beginning part of the sheet, back in September the 16th, I want to say, September 16th or September 26th. And these were the prices then. These were the rock bottom prices at that point, right? Well, I didn't bring you these four, but I brought you from Downmaker above, right? So since then, since that September price... AI pad's gone up 200%. Meta V pad, 5x. And this is having 20x at the beginning of the year. Came right down 5x. BSC pad, 2x. Game zone, 2.5x. Ada pad's gone up. Cedify, 182%. So all of these have really shut up since that video I brought you. That was literally the bottom. Of these coins. But now, as far as I'm concerned, it opens up. Right? So, to me, Bluezilla base launch pads, I, I know there's a lot of people have dumb opinions on Bluezilla, um, but I don't care to be fair because these guys made me a lot of money because I jumped on the train early. I missed BSC pad. That was the one that could have made me the mega money, but I, I, I missed that because I was on a fucking stream when it launched. And, um, Instead, Joe Parry's made a he's made he's he's made a whole fucking income on that trade. So I missed that one, but I made a lot of money. I I was like, I'm not gonna let that happen again. And I made a lot of money with Bluezilla launch pads in the last. And I don't care what people say. Like as far as I'm concerned, if you get in early, you're getting look. Like at the time when I first brought this video. You know, to get into AI pad at the lowest tier was 124 dollars. Get into Meta V pad was 108, and to get into it. Uh, get into um, yeah, get into Meta V Pad was six hundred forty eight at the highest tier. Now it's what five x more than that. So you get in low, and then you hold basically, and you hold for the bull market. And if it goes a bit lower, then you have a little bit extra for liquidity. So what you'll notice with every launch, with every hyped launch, because I remember this with in the last bull market, every time a big launch happened. The, so the tokens would dump. So you have a big, you have a big god candle, literally just before the IDO, and then a god candle, well, a devil candle, um, 
on the other side once people had partaken in the IDO, right? So it's good to have some liquid. So you've got some, you've got your staked amount, the amount you need to take part in IDOs, and you've got some liquid to for the for the big volatility. But during a course of a bull market, this will go up. It will go two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, and it will just keep on going up and to the right, in my opinion. So it will go up and it will dump, like with the 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 launch pad you need to take part in a in a in a project. It will go up and then it will go down a little bit, and then it'll just it'll just keep on going up and down. So Bruce said I'd do this well, and. I would also add some more. So what Bluezilla do not have, so Bluezilla have got a Metaverse launch pad, an AI launch pad, a Games launch pad, a Pulse Chain launch pad, and a Cardano launch pad, much to Alex Becker's dis <laughs> distaste, I dare say. Um, and they've got a Poly pad as well, but they don't have, and they've got BSC pad. So they cover a lot of the chains, but they don't have Solana. They don't have Avalanche. They don't have Sui. They don't have Aptos. And to me, these are new crypt. These are new blockchains that, as we've seen with Playable, with Shrapnel, with um, Cryo War, you know, we've seen that games from unique chains get get visibility better than if you're just building for ETH. So therefore, Star Launch, this has already done um, a three x, four x actually, nearly. Um, Ava launch has done um, a, roughly 2x actually that's done nearly a 3x as well and um, Sweepad has done a good race and so an Aptos launch I'm not a big fan of Aptos launch I'll be honest but look at this this is the most important thing right the IDO prices Okay, so for Star Launch, Star Launch was a six cent IDO. I know because I took part in the IDO, and it went to twenty two dollars. That's insane. And now, Star Launch is just above IDO price at eight cents. So although it has gone up, because bull, you know, in, in a bull phase it does go up. And like I said, I don't don't buy anything. Don't buy anything, but I'm just making you very aware of the situation. So, Star Launch, 381x. 381x. And now, it's pretty much back to where it was. With that potential again. And Star Launch came out again at the end of the last bull market. It only launched like one decent project. The one project that they launched which was decent was Monkey Ball, and that's 75 x Imagine what they could have done. And why I like Star Launch is because Star Launch have done games. So if we have a look at we have a look at Star Launch. Star Launch did uh, Star Launch did Monkey Ball, Tiny Colony, Plutonians, Legends of Illumia, Cricket Star, and I don't know these other ones, but I was in on Tiny Colony, Cricket Star, Monkey Ball, and Monkey Ball did superb, superbly well. It was the only one that launched in the bull market. Tiny Colony came out later. It didn't do so well. It did do well, but it didn't do so well. And Cricket Star really didn't do well. And that should have done well. Um, but what you can see is, is that it's pretty much 100% games. They are bringing out Super Oracles. So that's showing you that they do bring out some fundamentally good uh, cryptocurrencies, actually. But games and Solana. Games and Solana. That's the, that's, that's the magic, isn't it? So although it's not quite as sexy as Avalanche at this point, because Avalanche is like new and virgin territory and starts and Solana isn't as much, still, that potential is there. It came out literally at the end of the bull market, made that 381x. Fucking amazing. And then... Um, come down pretty much back. Come down pretty much back to it. Then you've got Ava Launch. This is the only Avalanche launch pad I've seen. And Ava Launch actually came up, uh, actually launched Meta Derby, which I showed you earlier. And it launched Cribada. Cribada. And that did 172x. So that's pretty epic. That is up there. 
That is more than a iPad's done so far. I mean, admittedly, that was not in a poor market, but it's just showing you that is a decent multiplier, even though it isn't in the main. They didn't, they haven't done consistent 172x, but Ava Launch came out right at the end of the bull market. In fact, at the beginning of the bear market. So it, that 172x, I don't know how it did that. But anyway, this one went from a 53 cent IDO all the way to $20. So pretty much nearly the same. Not as good a multiplier, but roughly the same trajectory. And this has come down to 41 cents. So it did come down to 15 cents, which was 3x lower than the IDO price. But now it's still lower than the IDO price. Again, I'm waiting because this has only pumped recently because, in fact, it only pumped in the last week because of Avalanche and because of games. So that's why. But um, I'd wait for this to come down. But this is an entry into Avalanche. Avalanche-based cryptocurrencies. They're followed by Shrapnel as well. So clearly they're still around. And clearly they're known in the Avalanche community. Sweepad. This was one I could have gotten at private sale. And thankfully I didn't. Because it actually came down below private sale price. And is likely to again. So this was 3.5 cents. Went up to 55 cents. I think that was when it first exploded out, which was 16x. And then it came down to half the sweep ad price, the sweep ad IDO price. So uh, actually would make it, what, 32x from its all-time high. And this is during a bear market. So sweep ad has never been around during a bull market. And as I said, launch pads are bull market tools. So it's never really exploited a good bull market like all of the rest of them. So sweep ad... You know, from my understanding, you know, this had VCs and, you know, because I was offered this at private sale because quite a few, you know, notable people in crypto had um, bought into Sweepad. Um, I don't know quite what happened with it. I guess it's just because it's not a bull market and not a lot of people are looking at Swe at the moment. And uh, that I expect to change in 2025 massively. But... Good opportunity to earmark it for games in the future because games are the easiest to to conceptualize. It's it's the easiest from idea to pitch deck, and then you just go to the launch pad and say, "This is my idea for the crypto. These are the tokenomics." Blah 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 blah, and it could be launched, and then you get you become part of that game, and then you see that game. You you buy it at the IDO price. You see it all the way through the bull market. And that is the that would be the benefit for Sweepad, is is that you're in the early Swee based games. It's more likely to be games because they're just the easiest to produce. And then you're just in there. You just wait. You just you just you just like with Meta V Pad, you, you at the end of the day you can take out your you can take out what you stake to t take part in the launches. So you never really lose money, as it were. And you don't lose the tokens. But the tokens may lose value, or in a bull market more than likely gain value so you just keep the tokens in you just get every every coin that comes out you know spend 100 200 300 dollars here and there i mean i did one idea on a crap launch pad called kickpad um what like two years ago it it like it 400 x polylastic it was called and it made a terrific multiplier and that's all i needed just that one justified kickpad even though kickpad was a part of shit it ended up going to zero um because i made that 400x or whatever on um polylastic or whatever it was kind of but it was 100 or two i was something good it was a very good multiplier put it that way so you just you just invest 100 300 whatever here and there and eventually boom you just get one one big one Aptos Launch don't like this one because this one is a bit different to the other launch pads and i'm hoping that Bluezilla bring out an Aptos pad eventually. They probably will when the Aptos hype starts. But um, what I don't like about it is there's something about bonding, bonding tokens. It, to be just make us just make a launch pad fucking simple. You stake some tokens. You have some stable coins. You just use those stable coins to buy the the crypto on launch. Bob's a good one. That's all you need. Don't complicate it. Don't do bonds on shit. But having said that, it has gone up a little bit. I would say that the reason it's not done so well is because of its pretty stupid um, bonding process. 
and they haven't had any successful launches. I haven't seen any launches, neither has Sweepad though, to be fair. And um, this one is actually 10x less than its IDO price, so pretty good. It's at 1.5 million market cap. It's pretty good. I would wait for it to come down a lot more, because, <laughs> but it could be good. It could be very good. Right, okay. So my personal best picks, for me anyway, would be AIPad, Meta VPad. Um, I obviously have these anyway, but these are the two that I think are going to pop off next time. Game Zone could, you know, to get to its all time high, uh, would be what a forty X. That's pretty. That's pretty good actually. Um, Seedify, I would not bother with these two. I don't know if I would bother. Might be worth it, but you won't make gains on the token. It might just be worth it so that you you cover all angles. Because some cryptos, like I think Citizen Conflict, I think is going to be coming out on Polka Starter. And you'd miss out on that if you're not on Polka Starter. But I wouldn't expect to make massive multipliers. So see if I, on the condition it goes down more, and then have some exposure at this point, and in the lack thereof of Bluezilla-based versions of this, I would, I would, uh, you know, be looking to get into these at lower prices and just be able to buy the games, buy the games. I don't know if if Shrapnel was actually going to launch via Aval Avalanche, because they are following them. So you never know. So I think Avalanche have got decent. They've got decent connections, from what I can see. Right. Um, Star Launch has had a god candle the past few days, isn't it? Really a god candle. Um, Meta VPAD, this has done super well. Uh, for obvious reasons. Because it was it was the cheapest... It's the cheapest launch pad to get into... It was in the hundreds of thousands of market cap. And that's why it's done so super well. And without a doubt, gaming cryptocurrencies are going to come out via Meta VPAD. So this one to me is it's a no-brainer. Neo Tokyo. It's funny, you know. I have... I This is Bytes. I bought a video... Or I bought a video on Bytes at the beginning of 2022 when it was about $11. And then from that point, it went down to $1.26. So... Um, I did say in that video, don't buy it. I did say something along the lines of wait for it to go down. But um, this is Alex Becker's NFT ecosystem. So I am actually in Neo Tokyo. I'm an elite citizen, season one citizen. So if you are an if you are a Neo Tokyo citizen, then Kiflom. <laughs> but anyway, so. Um, yeah, so I'm part of this, and I can tell you firsthand that there's some really good people in the Neo Tokyo Discord. So you need to, I think you need to be, well, I did anyway. I'm in the elite group because I'm an elite, I have an elite citizen, which is a um, rarity rank of less than 500. So it's got to have, a, it's a very, they're, they're the very rare um, Neo Tokyo uh, citizens so I'm in that and there are a lot of really cool people in there like I don't I don't feel like I'm the only you know person with a social standing in crypto in there like I do in every other one but um in there it's like you know you've got heads of of various um I think you've got uh is it wag me games creative director or something you've got a load of the gaming ecosystem managers and ceos in neo tokyo and they are a launch pad which i didn't really know it's, it's only happened recently which is their like citadel which is where they um they vote on projects and you can take part in projects i haven't taken part in any neo tokyo projects but without a doubt this is alex becker's project you know he he pumped uh elio's project yesterday so i'm imagining that elio is going to repay him and i mean elio is a co co-founder of neo tokyo anyway so they're both going to be pumping this like shit off a stick in the next bull market so i imagine this is going to do really well as well but i haven't seen how you take part i haven't actually done that bit yet i've just gotten involved with the community a little bit now this is a little bit of alpha 
I've heard on the grapevine because Bluezilla yesterday, so Bluezilla are the founders of all the famous pads. Bluezilla yesterday changed their name, changed the name of the group to Bluezilla Upcoming IDOs and INOs, which is um, Initial Dex Offerings and... Uh, what's N? I thought N was um, NFTs, but NFT initial NFT offerings, I think. But anyway, they changed their name, and I think something's brewing. And my sources say that whatever's launching, whatever they're going to launch, is going to be on AI pad and BSC pad. But I don't know necessarily how. I think it's I think it's a pretty good source. But um yeah. AI pad and BSC pad is gonna be their next I think it's gonna come out soon. Just based on the fact that they woke up. So yeah. So just to give you a little bit of alpha for sticking around. Eight hundred and thirty four of you. What the fuck, man? I can't believe there's so many of you. By the way, Smash if you could, if you're still around, I would really appreciate it. If you just just, it's so simple. It's right underneath look, my face. Just tap that like button. I'd be very appreciative. Right, okay. Um, this has been a mega stream so far. So let me take some super, super chats. God, there's loads. It's David, David Stelter. So I think I answered your question on the pads. Star launch, Velas pad, pulse pad. I think I've answered your questions of where I think the money is, or where I think, you know, some of the more bullish projects are concentrated, but you just never know. You know, you just never know. That's why I'm in. I'm kind of in all of them. What do you think about Sidus in December? Uh, what do you mean? Do you mean do you, where I think the price will be? I think it'll go down. Um, Manny the Minister, $20. Thank you very much. You are gonna get some money, money, money. Actually, no. Let's do some. Uh, let's do some wainage <laughs> and some We're Alice Cooper itch. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Manny the Minister. Love the name. Supo Metis. Their new upgrade makes them far cheaper, faster, and superior. Layer two liquid staking coming live will decrease the 4.8 million supply even more. And Coin Bureau mentioned it today as top three picks for his cycle. Yeah, I mean. Metis? Why? Yeah, Metis. Metis I've spoken about. Um, yeah, Metis is was in my um, most recent... The coins that I think will do well. And I do think Metis will do well. I don't think it's going to do as well as Arbitrum and Optimism ultimately. Because I just think that they're in a more superior class of Layer 2. But Metis, I don't... I don't keep an awful lot of... I don't keep a massive tab on Metis, but, you know, I do think that this is probably one of the more respectable Layer 2s, you know, in conjunction with... um, with In conjunction with uh, Arbitrum and, and Optimism. I think that Polygon's done. Uh, I think that Arbitrum and Optimism are the, are the big cheeses, and I think that Metis will just... Because DJs love Metis. So I think it's going to do well. Obviously, as you say, Coin Bureau mentioned it as one of his three, um, three picks for this cycle. So uh, yeah, could do very well. Jay Terrell, thank you very much. Nineteen ninety nine. Love the channel. Thank you very much, Jay. You're going to get some of this. What is love? <laughs> thank you very much, Jay. I appreciate the feedback. Passing Arcturus. Please look into Fab Welt. Fab Welt. Yeah, I looked into Fab Welt before, to be fair, and um, it looks okay, but it is quite old. But it has done good recently, hasn't it? It certainly popped off since uh, since the beginning of the year. One point eight mil. I don't like the name Fabwell. What the fuck, man? I don't like the branding. I don't like the name Fabwell. I think it's a stupid name. That doesn't mean I'm going to make my investment decision solely on that, but it is a big reason. So 
the ecosystem, blockchain, yeah, 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 yeah. Can't actually click anything, so I don't even see the point of that. Games by Fabwell, Arsenal, Fanwelt. Oh, cool, it's like Wave Racer for the, um, what's it called? N Nintendo 64. That's pretty cool. So this is Fantasy Gaming and Arsenal, which looks like, I guess, like Call of Duty, right? So they got three games. Okay. Not bad, not bad. It's not bad, actually. I'll give you, I'll give them that. But what, what, what chain is it on? Oh, yeah. BNB and Polygon. They're crap. So I prefer if they're on better chains, if I'm honest with you. But it looks okay. It looks okay. It's got a lot of its supply out, actually. And it's got a very low, fully diluted supply. It's pretty good. Actually, it's not that old. It came out at the end of the last bull market. So it actually doesn't have much bull exposure. I'll look into these coins. I'll look into the games. And see if they're any good and look into the project a little. Let me just have a quick look at Fabwell. Shimmer. No, that's all right. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're not great, but they're they're pretty good. I don't really respect that. I would say they're a top tier two tier three, tier four. So thank you, passing Arcticus. Toby Zar, 90, no, Toby Ad, Adiega, 99 Zar, but you retracted your message, what did you say? But thank you very much for that, Toby. Let me just have a look and see what, what that actually equates to. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it anyway, Toby. I love it. <laughs> um, bear with me. Fit Your Purpose Podcast. Fourteen ninety nine. Thank you very much for that. Fit Your Purpose Podcast. Just grateful for your insights, Supo. Much love from Australia. I love it. Thank you very much. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Better take that one off just in case I get copyrighted. Wait a minute, have I got a little bit? Should have done my hair before I came online. Ah, uh, um. I just made a Godwick on Oasis. Oh, please don't say that. Please don't say that. Why am I on Meta Derby, for fuck's sake? Oh, it doesn't look like it. Looks like... Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, great. I'm now the new... I'm the new Alex Becker, people! It's gonna be done, hasn't it? <laughs> As I said, I don't want you to buy any of these games, okay? I'm just saying, just saying, all right? I may buy these games, I may not, who knows? But uh, if you wanna make five, 10, 15, 1,000 X, then you better make sure you watch. That's all I gotta say. But don't buy just because I say I like something. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. God candle, man. Um, <laughs> Toby Zar, what's your thoughts on Red Kite and Engine Starter? Nothing. I think they're shit. They're, they're ones that if you want to have... Actually, Engine Starter was not bad. Um, let me have a look and see the performances of Engine Starter. Because they, they came out in a very timely fashion, from what I remember. Their best was 53x. And I got into some of these. Chain GPT, Bet Hotel, Soul Chicks, Plutonians, Gaia, Everworld. Yeah, I got into some of these. Medieval Empires. It's Carl the Moon's project that actually stank. <laughs> After Casper, I was not going to get involved in another one. 
and Red Kite. Let me have a look. So if you want to have a look and see how a particular launch pad has performed, just go to Crypto Rank, type the launch pad in, and it should show you all of the... Oh, they got involved in... Oh, yeah, I remember Red Kite. This is a really weird way of getting into it. I remember that much. Yeah, they did Blocktopia. They did Sidus Heroes, actually. And they did GameFi. Meta Wars. Five hundred needed, and it's ten cents. So that is fifty dollars. I don't know if they're um. Oh, it was Polka, P K F. What is that? Polka Foundry. Because Red Kite isn't. Oh, it is actually. I must have rebranded. These guys have really good multipliers. It's not a very good um, route from current price to all time high. Ten cents to two ninety two. That's what a twenty nine x. That's pretty crap. But um, let me just see if they're active. I've never used Red Kite, so I've got no experience. But then again, I haven't used any of the other. Like a a Ava launch and all that lot. Four hundred sixty-four thousand followers. Followers, you know. Hmm. And they're still active. Hmm. That's nothing to do with them. Yeah, they're still active. They don't get much engagement, but they're still active, so you never know. Oh, and they also did Patex. Yeah, they're okay, actually, yeah, Red Kite. They're all right. They don't look very... I mean, what I do know is that a lot of these cryptocurrencies that launched on Red Kite, majority launched on other websites as well. Like, Red Kite did not have exclusivity on these, so Blocktopia was on quite a few, from what I remember. So... They only had a little bit. I couldn't really say, but it's okay. it's, it seems okay, actually. But, yeah, that's how I would check, is by looking on thingy-majiggy, on um, Crypto Rank. Crypto Rank! Um, Jay Terrell. Uh, thank you very much for 4.99, Jay. I appreciate that. That is in addition to what you gave me earlier. And... Uh, yeah, I love it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. We'll give you some okay. Oh, Panto basket. Panto basket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Kareen. Wow. Thank you very much for the $50. Thank you, Supo, for everything you do with your help planning, with your help planning to still load my bags as I've only been doing small DCAs. Awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that, Corrine. And I've got to say that I wish you the best of luck with your with the, your bag packing and getting some great cryptos. And as a result of that, I'm going to give you, you know, the Monaco morning, like, Karma because oh you deserve a thousand percent. I'm living in a dream. Really? Really? Yes. You know, I wake up every morning. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm living in Monaco. I'm living in a dream. Really? Really? Yes. <laughs> She's so lush. So thank you very much, Corrine. I appreciate that. And Varun... <laughs> for the Alex Becker thing. Well, it's got to be done, hasn't it? Varun, thank you very much. You better not be a Cardano holder, okay? Just make sure, if you want to make 5, 10, 15, 100, 1,000 X, you can be holding Cardano, okay? And if you want to keep your wife, you better make sure that you don't hold Cardano. Hold something like Sis Heroes or uh, Cedar Man, he's brilliant, isn't he? <laughs> right, okay, let's take some questions. Um, just some basic questions. And then how how long have I been on? Two hours 53. Mm. Someone with Super Chat asked about Conucopius. Where? I blame... I blame... 
YouTube if I have missed it. But I haven't seen one about cornucopias. Oh, hold on. Oh, I might have missed a couple here. Bear with me. Oh, hey, Steve, we just got here. Have you heard about Ava launch yet? Check the time of the pump versus Becca's video going about Avalanche type gaming and launchpad. Well, that was Nate. Thank you very much for the five dollars. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was, I've got to say, that was pretty um, coincidental that uh, I should just so happen to talk about it. It's like you read my mind. David Stelter, what's the difference between Tronpad and BSE pad? And is Tronpad worth getting, do you think? Um, Tronpad's dead now. Tronpad and KCC pad merged to create Polypad. So Tronpad's dead. So I would not get it. And BSE pad, well, that's the that's Bluezilla's main launch pad. So I would say that was pretty important for them anyway. And as I said, it's likely they're going to be. Oh, and you asked something else. You said, in, if the Bitcoin or Ethereum ETFs are approved in the next eight days, do you think it will be a temporary pump for the next start of the... If if BTCs, if, they're, if the ETFs are approved, that's it. It's game over for the bear market. That's it. It's over. I, even a recession, I don't think is gonna, because it's a it's it's a it's a spot ETF. It's not a futures ETF. If it was a futures ETF, then I would think, yeah, we could we could we could definitely see a massive crushing of the market because a bit a futures ETF is incentivized to to it could go either way. It's incentivized either way, um, and in a bear market, it's incentivized to go short. But um, a spot ETF, no, that is to me, it's game over. I, I always said right at the beginning, I said the big catalyst is the ETF. But I said regulation, re uh, recession, and then ETF and halving. So that's how I was seeing it going. But now, because I was seeing a recession was, would, would happen earlier because the, you know, the US went into a technical recession uh, ages ago. And they st they never admitted it. So I thought that we'd have the recessionary window earlier and it's still going on. So it's difficult, really, to know what's what's going to happen. But if the ETF happens, as far as I'm concerned, it's game over. And I just, to be honest, the day the ETF, if an ETF does get approved, I will probably just buy at that point. I'll just uh, fuck it, just buy my glimmer, buy whatever. But I'm hoping that we will have a big pullback before such a thing occurs. I don't think it'll be temporary though. I think that's it. I think I'll be game over seriously. I don't see a super chat about Cornucopius, but I will. I have already explained that I think that Cornucopius has got the um, has got the benefit of being both Cardano narrative. Hold on a minute, actually. Let me have a look at how is Cornucopius done. No, I want that. Cornucopius is at the top echelon of performers. Like, from where it was at 0 0.009, it has done a 5x. So it's done super well. It's done super well. It's destroyed Tau. And is actually one of the better... Is actually the best game. Well, yeah, it's one of the best, anyway. The best game. And, uh, yeah, I've always liked Cornucopius. I've always liked it. It's very much respected in the Cardano community as well. They really like it. They're looking forward to it. So it's kind of like the Sunday swap of gaming. <clears throat> Massive multiplayer online RPG where player-driven economies and a first for adventure rule the bubble verse. Develop your skills as a trader, artisan, or entrepreneur as you explore the cornucopious land masses. Yada, yada, yada. Mini games, digital assets. Yada, yak, yak. Future's here. It is a metaverse cryptocurrency more than it looks like a gaming one. So it's like metaverse stroke NFT is how it looks. But um, I remember this was a super small market cap like... Yeah, when it was like less than a cent. So I would wait for it. It won't go back to less than a cent, I don't think. But it could go to about a cent. Mm. What are the chances of the ET 
F not being approved. You say you want you say BlackRock want Bitcoin at lower prices, so surely they won't want it approved. No, that's what I mean. This is why I'm expecting the big crash, right? So I'm expecting for them to build up all this excitement, all this excitement, all this excitement to absolutely decimate everybody's hopes and happiness and all the profits. Because I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Looking at my wallet, uh, I don't want this to end <laughs> to an extent. As much as I love buying the bottom, and I have been, um, and obviously I haven't deployed a lot of my stable coins, uh, even I, who has had his fortunes ripped away many a time in crypto, even I would be, uh, even I would be pretty sad to see those gains go. But I'm not selling. A, a because it's a tax event, and I don't want to unlock a income tax event of 50%. But um, but also because I think that the gains, even though they're great now, it's only like, what, 30x maximum? Well, I haven't had a 30x. I'd say it's probably, other than on um, profit bots, I would say I've had in the main about 5x's. You know, uh, is that enough? No. Not when you consider in the last bull market there were 100x's ad nauseum. Well, not ad nauseum, but you had to be good at what you selected to invest in. And you had to invest at the low. But, um, yeah, but uh, I don't even know what point I was making there. But, um, yeah, I would be very, very upset, actually, now. Having seen, having seen you know... The profits, I do kind of love them. I don't really want to lose them, but I know I've got to if I want to get my bottom prices. But um, yeah, I mean, basically build up, build up, build up, absolutely decimate people, like crush them, and then they sell, and then they leave, and then a recession, and then and then we get an ETF after, you know, next October or something. But I mean, that's just it's just speculation. That's my speculation, you know, seeing how the money works. That's what I would say. I would not think that they've bought enough Bitcoin. Certainly not enough at the price they want to get it at. But, you know, you never know. Maybe they did. And they've just done it through hidden wallets or something. But I don't know. I couldn't say. 2,000 for Chirply possible? No. Nothing's going to 2,000x. That's not a meme coin. Atlas token or Atlas DAO for better gains? Personally, Atlas, a Atlas token. But, um... You know, the only problem is, is that, you know, with um, with game tokens, they can be sold off. But I just don't think so. Not with Star. Star Atlas made the better gain at IDO. So, I mean, I, I invested in both because I invested in via paid network, I want to say. And um, Star Atlas outperformed Dow easy. And it's just more, it's just more psychologically pleasing. No, not Dow, Polis. More psychologically pleasing. And it's a lower market cap. So that's my, my personal opinion. I've got both. But I've been accumulating Star Atlas, not not the not the polis. What the fuck? Have some integrity. What the fuck are you talking about? Goodbye. Um What's better? Star Atlas or Cohen Ucopia? Star Atlas, without a shadow of a doubt. Star Atlas is like Solana's first game. It's the equivalent of like Crypto Punks. So Crypto Punks was Ethereum's first NFT collection, and as a result of that, it's the one that you know is arguably the most expensive collection. But um, and so Star Atlas is like the equivalent. It's like Solana's first game, and uh, without th this is the one everybody knows. CKB may be doing an NFT thing on CKB. Who cares? I think CKB is part of shit. Gold fever. Not going to lie, 100x. Mm, okay. I think people are very, very deluded. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Everybody's like 50x, 100x. Look, I say 100x, 1000x, but they're not all going to do 100x, 1000x, right? There's probably going to be one or two. But, you know, 100x is not easy. You need a mix 
when a crypto let's let's just use um uh seedify maybe as an example like the only way you do a megarific 100x or something like that is if you've got a big youtuber that talks about you and you're a quality project you can't just be a quality project you need to have a big youtuber you need to have good marketing you need to have listings it's a snowball effect like it starts at the beginning of the bull market it's a snowball effect the marketing is on point. You get listings over the course of time. You get, um, you know, big YouTubers talking about you. If you get Alex Becker talking about you or Crypto Banter or Elio Trade, you're going out to the whole YouTuber network. You're going out to you know, all the people that are trying to copy Crypto Banter and all that. They're going to talk about um, that coin as well. So you, you build up a snowball. Marketing, YouTubers actual good project but if you're not even a good project like you, you, you've already lost and if you don't get any youtubers again no one's gonna talk no you're not gonna grow you need big youtubers you need the biggest youtubers so you need coin bureau alex becker bitboy altcoin daily elio crypto banter i think they're the main ones they're the, the top ones. Am I missing any? They're the top ones. If they talk about you, you can pretty much be assured that most people will know about you after that video. No, Lark. Lark's shit, man. Lark is crap. Lark did a video on um, Stratos. He got 8k views. He's shit. No one watches it. What a crap video, honestly. Like, I'd be embarrassed if I was him. Like, how can you do a video, have that many subscribers and get only that many views? Like, that's just a joke. Yeah, I am looking at the regular guys. I'm looking at them right now. Metagod, are you still interested? Um, They never actually got back to me. So, I, I don't actually, I don't know what they're doing. They never got back to me in the group that I found. But, um, you know, you never know. Apparently, one of the developers started tweeting. and But I don't know what's going on, in all honesty. I couldn't, I couldn't say. What's your take on Somi? Um, oh, is that your friend Somi? He's okay. I mean, nobody really knows about him. I only know about him because he's in the Hex community and that's about it. Any other questions, people? Come on, now's the time. I'm out of Super Chats. And how long have I been on? Oh, three hours seven. I should go in about five minutes. Hex players dumb hard. Are you buying? I should, but I, I probably won't. Whenever a coin is at its low... And nobody's buying it. That's the time to buy it. You know. It's uh, like for instance. When I spoke about Miria the first time. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody was buying it. Nobody was touching it. And then I made a video. And it popped off right from there. Like it was. Um, when was it? 1.2 cents. How long ago was that? Yeah here. I spoke about it. And then from that point. Bleh, fucking just kept on going up and up and up and then bang and other people started talking about it grok yeah grok um is what is it elon musk's ai something or other i saw it come out last week and i saw it did really well it's done now it's gone it's really made the money so anybody getting into it now mm, i think it's a bit dumb but it's up to you at the end of the day you take you have to take on the responsibility for your own actions. What do you think of Squid Squid Grow? That's a good point, actually. Because the squid, new Squid Games um series is coming out soon, isn't it? Oh look, it's already reflecting that, maybe. 2x? Uh, I 
What? I thought it was coming like in a couple of weeks. Yeah, November the 22nd. So that's soon, isn't it? Until the 6th. 10 episodes. Okay. Yeah, so I would have expected for Squid Grow to, um, to already start growing, as it were. Any thoughts on Electronium? No. Shit coin from the past. Shit mining crappy coin. Um, Wham, yeah, Wham's okay. Wham's done well, hasn't it? Kajira. Do you enjoy what you do? God, I wish nobody had said Wham now. Is this the one that Crypto Banter said he really likes? I guess too high up. What the? I don't even know what it is. I've never even heard of it. Well, I have heard of it, but I never looked into it. Blockchain for real yield. Oh, wow. So this is... Um... So this is... Um... A DeFi layer one. I'm guessing a lot like... What's it called? Injective. Oh, it's built on Cosmos. Right, okay, yeah. So I can see why now. But, you know, I'm not in the DeFi market, so I don't really look at DeFi much, but I can see why this did well. But you had to have been able to predict about Injective, which obviously I did. Super, hey Super, do you have market caps in mind like less than 10 million market? Yeah, I've just gone through a load. Bonk price prediction, I don't know. Difficult to say, it's already, it's already flown, so I think it could probably still go quite well. But it's not something I would get in now. You know, it's, it's already too late. You just have to wait for this one. Let me have a look at a month. A month ago, it was 6018, and now it's 5022. So it's still, um, still over 10x where it was at the low. Have you heard about... What w what w what what do you mean? What do you mean? I don't know. I've never heard of it. Let me have a look. What do you mean? Been around a while. We invest in crypto startups, and you can claim your share. Of what? No way! This fucking FOMO guy. This geezer, come on man, no fucking way. Fucking YouTuber. Fucking hate that guy. What about Saito Super? No, I've already said I don't like Saito. And funnily enough, Saito was, anyway, a gaming play because they had an arcade. And they were looking to be the mini clip of crypto. And what's it done in the last last few weeks? Oh, nothing really. It's gone from 6.8 to 8.7. Wow. What is the point, man? That's so shit. 20% in a month. Yeah, these guys are dead. Thoughts on virtual versions? Never heard of it. I think the Safe Moon cult moved to Squid Grow. May have been. Shrapnel best shooter game of big potential. Yeah, I've talked about it already, Magic Power. Wow, I can't believe how many people are here. 722. This is insane. I've not had this many in years. Right, I am going to make a move, though. As much as I absolutely love having so many people watching me live, it's literally... It's literally... Um, it's literally awesome. Um, I will... They can be because I've been on for three hours. But, uh, so how do you know low targets to come out? What would you do if you, what would, how, what would you do to get into good projects? Are they from launch pads? No, not, not mostly. Um, H. Crowler, I don't, I don't mean to be, um, you know, condescending or anything, but I get, I get offered a lot of private sales. I don't take many of them, but I do get offered a lot because I'm a YouTuber. Uh, oh, that's it. Army of Fortune, someone said.
There's not even an army of fortune. Why do people ask me to look at stuff when it's not even there? It's not even there. I don't get it. <laughs> why ask? Why ask for something that's not around? Because your bedroom loves Kajira. Yeah, I saw. I saw a tweet he did. Dang, so right. I just saw the Super Bowl's live three hours. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, that's going to be a mega, that's going to be an epic replay. Right, people. It's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be uh, Super Bowl, Alex, whatever. <laughs> Signing out. Make sure you don't buy any of that Cardano, people. Remember that. If you want your wife to be loyal to you, you got to show her some alpha. That is launch pads. Games developers. Gaming coins, whatever, on Avalanche and things like that. But you do not want to go, you don't want to, you don't want to be getting any Cardano. Believe you me. Right. <laughs> right, I will make a move now, people. Thank you all for turning up. I will now say bye to you guys. So if you guys want to just um, say bye and I'll say bye back. <laughs> Lawrence Farrell, good to see you. Ellen P, Burkan, Magic Power, Muhammad Ella, Jonathan Savage, Umair, Nisha, Prime Resources, Frederick, Oral, AI Rod, Matson Noble, Lawrence Farrell, Stephen, Kevin Banks, Paolo, Nisha, Kareen, Brazil Zoo, Lindsay, Smut, Baz, Kaz, Dino, uh, USO Throad, Ka. Hourglass, Roshan, The Real Stavros, Pablo, Stephen, Daniel, Jacobs, Bamidel, Yolo Don, Yezerd, Luis, Yolo Don, John UK, Kamaruran, Nano Fitness, Umair, Swaza, Maximus Diamond Hands, Jazz Baksh, John. Ferris Bear, John's wife. See you, John's wife. I'll be seeing you later, John's wife. <laughs> Man, I love it. Um, Steph, Bagnarok, Ellie, Vladimir, M3, no, 3M Hero, Paolo, Hi Ladies, I'm Hung Like a Hamster. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that. <laughs> Someone clip that. <coughs> right, okay, people. Thank you all for being here. Free Palestine. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to say my opinions on that. Daily Funny, Terence Johnson. Mr. Talk a lot of crypto. Tristan Elward. Muzz 2020. Thank you all for being here, people. I love you all. Hope you enjoyed. I hope it's given you some good food for thought when it comes to your portfolio. But you've seen it from me, essentially, which is that gaming and launch pads are the most bullish. And they're certainly the ones that I love and the ones that are most easily understood and likely to absolutely pump. But particularly those that are on different chains, which is what I'm also going to be looking for in this whole bear market. Because at the end of the day, I still don't think the best coins necessarily have come out just yet. I'm still waiting for Kai Network and... That's going to be a beauty. All right, people, I love you, and I will see you next time. Snowy Galaxy, that said your name, said your name. Right, adios, people. It is lights out, all out.